Good morning, Janice. I decided I would put this to bed right away because some things just don't deserve attention. But when you're mixing me in with other things that are going on that I'm not even aware of, we need to lay it all to bed. So I'll give it a minute. This is going to be short, simple, straight to the point. I'm not going to replay her stream from last night. She actually did too. Um, and I'm speaking directly to allegedly with Brittany J. One thing you need to learn very quickly is uh, you need to be very articulate about what you're talking about and who you're talking about. Because when you have people sitting on panel, when you are claiming that you're getting threats against your children, that somebody's going to call CPS on you, blah, blah, blah. And then you have Loudmouth Sarah over there saying something about they have an imaginary island, you know, trying to throw me and my group in to anything that's going on or something about friends getting on panel and she's promoting somebody else. I don't even know these people you're talking about, nor do I stand for anybody wasting resources with CPS. You need to listen up, turn turn those ears on for a quick minute because you're going to hear a few things that you might want to be aware of before you start running your mouth or trying to uh, throw me in with your little smear campaign and your emotional manipulation because I don't play that game. You'll find out very quick that that's not going to work over here. So let me let all of you pull in and then we're going to set some things straight. Good morning, girls and everybody else. Hey, Tootsie, Helen. Helen, I missed you. It's good to see you back. Are you on top chat? <laughs> hey, Dragonfly. Hey, Teresa. Running Bear, Malicious, Perry, Liz, Britt, Jennifer, Daddy's Baby Girl, Lindsay Lee. Okay, so I guess some people need a quick um, understanding of what happens here. So there was a live last night. I watched it. Brittany did a live addressing drama and other stuff. I need to be very clear to Brittany and her little cronies, I think, because they're trying to mix like past issues she's had with people into me addressing her current behavior over the misinformation that she's putting out in this case. Two different things, two complete different situations. I don't know nothing about your personal life. That's why I made, I didn't even know you had a husband, a boyfriend. I don't care. Your personal life isn't my concern. I wasn't like including, she made some statement that I said, or somebody said she was flirting with CJ. What are you trying to do? Are you going to start trying to destroy my relationship? Um, no, it's not that deep. Seriously. Like I didn't know you had a boyfriend. Okay. Secondly, the kid aspect, we're going to get that very clear and very concise. So there's no misconception because your little emotional manipulation doesn't work with me. Um, I don't, even play those little kid games. So don't try it. But since he did, here we go. You are failing to understand the bigger picture here. You are claiming, oh, she said her religion was attacked too. We'll address that. She is claiming that these parents have mistreated Sebastian, that all of these things have happened to Sebastian. Meanwhile, when she's live streaming, I don't care if her kids are in the background or anything like that. The point was that you have behaviors and things that if you were in their shoes, you wouldn't want brought attention to. And one of the first things that if something ever, t God forbid, and I hope it never happens to anybody, one of our kids ran off. The first thing that they would use is pulling and seeing, oh, look, her kids were up way past their bedtime, just like you've been doing to Katie. The irony that you can't see, the very things that you're condemning Katie for, and then you yourself do, is the only reason why your children were mentioned. Because you fail to see that these are very typical parents going through a heartbreaking time, and you and your misinformation is not helping those parents at all. But then you expect to be given grace your kids aren't my business. Don't use it like that. I don't want to hear this whole special need thing because guess what, baby girl? Maybe something you should realize is that's why I'm passionate about the things I'm passionate about because I've raised two that are not my biological own for nine years because of drug addiction. One is confirmed on the spectrum. The other one has very high possibility we haven't had her tested yet, and a ton of other behavioral health, which is not the internet's business, nor do I care. 
we are very open about it. But before you start thinking that you're going to put out any type of narrative that anybody from my group is attacking your children, you might want to sit the fuck down because I won't play your games or anybody else's. I find it very disgusting that anybody wastes any resources that could affect a child. I also find it disgusting that anybody thinks that they're going to try to emotionally manipulate people and say that you're being bullied when we're pointing out your behavior online. It's a public platform. This is called commentary. You don't like what I have to say, then don't say it. And please do not talk about her children in my comment section. I don't need to know about her private life. Don't care. That is none of my business. I don't intend on going after anything but her words on the internet. That's it. Her misinformation in an active child's missing case. That's it. You need to sit all the way fucking down, though, because the one thing you'll learn about me is I don't play games like this. You're not going to emotionally, emotionally manipulate people. And as far as your religion being attacked, again, you claim you're a Christian. Meanwhile, you're sitting there condemning a parent over things that you have no clue about. No clue about. You are running Katie and Chris through the fucking mud. But you can't even handle a little bit of commentary over your public actions. You need to grow up. Because if you think this is going to go personal with me, it won't. I could care less about you, anything you got going on or anything. I'm going to continue to highlight the bullshit that you called out. And all you're doing is giving yourself more attention. More attention for people to see the bullshit you're pulling. That's it. The little emotional manipulation, crybaby act, storm off camera, blah, blah, blah. It, it's not going to work. Trying to mix me and my imaginary island. Oh my God, you guys are so, I, I can't even, thin-skinned, immature, which we can be immature too. I mean, totally fine. But one thing you'll learn about the island is we don't play stupid, silly games with wasting resources. Most of us are moms of kids with special needs. Most of us are family members who have gone through loss. All of the shit that you're trying to manipulate, that's what we are passionate about. And that's why we are such an island of people who don't think that what you guys are doing is acceptable. You claim you're Christian. Meanwhile, I thought Christians don't judge. I don't think, last time I checked, I don't see most Christians I know, well, self-proclaimed Christians like you tear apart another mother that's going through one of the worst moments of her life. Meanwhile, claiming that they're a Christian and better than it, that mother and can't handle even being pointed out that if you were in those shoes, look at all the things that could be used against you. You're not going to come in here and attack my mods. The racist comments yesterday were out of control. I tried to ignore it. I don't know who it is. Rapper runs around with a bunch of alts. Okay. That ain't going to happen. My mods, I don't even have a group chat with my mods. My mods do what they want, when they want, what they see fit, because I trust them, I respect them, and I know them. Not once have my mods ever been instructed to do a thing. So keep that energy towards me. Stop trying to go around and act a fool. My mods think oftentimes differently than I do. They're entitled to that. They've got blue wrenches because I trust them. Th that's it, pretty simple. We don't operate the way you're used to operating, obviously. We don't play the little high school games. We're all too busy taking care of our lives and occasionally spending some time commentating on people like you who spread misinformation and missing children's cases, who have made a living off of exploiting children's cases. This will never go personal. You can do and say whatever. I've been doxxed. I've been, I've had CPS called. Kyle's business, they try to shut down all of the above. I've been through this arena. I don't play these games. You can ask anybody. I'm not going to play them with you. It will never turn into a back and forth, little petty drama, weaponizing CPS type shit. Not going to happen today, tomorrow, or any other day. But you will stop trying to include me with your other bullshit of other people. And that will come to a swift halt. Or you will see some pressure that you don't like trust and belief because the last girl that attempted to uh, weaponize horrible situations and somehow blame me for him 
lied about an entire DV situation, tried to weaponize it against me. Meanwhile, it was photos of a car accident. I don't play these games about anything. Trust and believe. You will not ever try to mix me in with any threats of any child. That's all I do is advocate on the best things for my kids. And that's why I'm so passionate about parents like Sebastian's being attacked when we have no inclination that they did anything. But you've sat over there night after night exploiting Sebastian, exploiting their weakest moments, exploiting the parents and their tragedies and how they behave isn't okay with you. You need to sit all the fucking way down because I won't play with you at all. Threatening to go legal to get cease and desist, baby girl, it's a piece of paper. I'll rip it up and show it right on the screen. I'm not afraid of you. I got one from LuLaRoe. It's a fucking piece of paper. I am within my bounds to call you out, confront you, commentate, whatever you want to fucking call it. Have at it on your public actions on this platform. You don't want people to criticize you over the words you put on this platform, then stop doing it. Stop exploiting these children and these parents in their worst times. Stop clickbaiting. Stop putting misinformation out. That's a you problem, not a me problem. I will never play these games with anyone. Oh, the first one she deleted. The second one at the end, she storms out to. Sarah says something at like the 280 mark, minute mark. And that second one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, reading these. <clears throat> Voices, I haven't checked it yet. Yeah, she's looking for an attorney for harassment. Um, since when did commentary become harassment? Uh, shit, one of my mods even got CPS called her in docs too. That was from Molly and Molly's crew though. Oh, Mark, I'm sorry. You know what? It was a good donation from your heart, Mark. That's all you can sit with. People, I don't think people see oftentimes the slimy, grimy, slick maneuvering with these. Oh, Cassie, my mods run the show. I am, hey, Don, thank you for renewing. My mods, we don't have a group chat. Like, I don't do Discord. I don't do any of those, like, behind the scenes. I text with most of my mods. Um but they're never required to do anything. A couple of them just got wrenches the other day and that caused shit already. Like, these are people I trust and I fuck with. They're not expected to be here. They don't know I'm going live. Like, none of that. They show up if they have time and if it fits in their day. They're people I trust and love, like, that I mess with. Like, these are people that over the last, most of them have been here all along. Like, it's just so crazy to me. Good morning, True Crime Cafe with Diego. Is it Diego? I said Diego. What the fuck? I can't even talk this morning. Good morning, Emily. Hey, Layla. Hey, Pika. You better leave my mods alone. Pointer lover, I would. Hey, Pika. Yeah, I did. I did. That's what I'm addressing. And I caught the one that she deleted before. I don't play little kid games. Ever. I'm not going to do it with you. There was a chick that before you, let me just kind of give you a rundown here. There was a chick that came before you that has single white female syndrome. She wants to be me. She wants to wear my skin. Okay. I went through that for over a year. Complete obsessive, complete just insane nonsense. I can't even explain how incredibly cringe it got. The emotional manipulation, the claims of 17 threats and all of this shit. We've been there, done that. Never has it ever happened. Never will it happen. I don't care about your family. I don't care about your personal life. I don't care about none of that shit. I am talking about your current behavior. I don't need to know about your past to call you out on things that you're putting out here publicly. The two things, I just don't play like that. I'm not involved in these little clicks. People aren't feeding me information about you. I don't know where, I think that's what you're used to, but that's not how we work. Not at all. Your behavior, current day, about what you're doing to the parents of a missing child, that's problematic enough. That's all I care about. <laughs> Good morning, you guys. Oh, I'm sure. 
Yep. The Islanders protect their island. That's for damn sure. And I didn't build it. We built it. Me and the Islanders. Because we didn't even understand that there was communities out here. That's why that all came about. It was a big old fucking joke. You call us cartoon characters with a fake island. Okay. Do you think that's going to offend me? What? I was called Hulk Hogan because my shoulders are broad. And Mrs. Doubtfire because they thought it would be an insult. I'm sorry. I love Robin Williams and tragedy with what happened. Um, hello. Wait. Can you guys even get good at your insults, please? Last night, so Tanya Harding. That might have been my best one so far. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning, SRB. Yeah, exactly, Janice. You're truly not that interesting. Hey, Hope for Snoopy. Oh, my gosh. See, that's the craziest thing to me, Granny's watching. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, this isn't harassment. Nobody's bullying you. Going and getting a cease and desist and RO. Like, what? Over in What? Is this like the storm slam the door? Like, they're affecting my income. Here, Here's my thing. If your job is exploiting, if if you make a living exploiting children and their families at their worst moments, that's a you thing that you have to take into accountability. Like, you have to sit with that. Not me. Don't try to rub your accountability off on anybody else. There ain't no group. Those clicks and cults. It's Tuesday. Start a cult. <laughs> it's so dumb. I've never heard. And now Tanya Harding yet. Oh, SRB. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, Terry. Absolutely. Oh, the irony that they can't see that, like, and the audacity for her to attempt to cry victim. Meanwhile, she is cutting a mom and her husband, the stepdad, down every single night because she don't like something they said or did in an interview. Meanwhile, can you imagine if she was in these shoes and was put in that hot seat, all the different turns and twists of the story? Can you imagine? Oh, Debbie, I, I, I don't care at all. I actually get really in. I, I make memes out of them and um, they become my avatars. I was Mrs. Doubtfire for a long time. It's just so gross. And Sarah, let me be very close. Or let me be very close. I can, no, please, let's not be very close. Let me be very, very straightforward with you, Sarah. You don't like me because I put you right in your place, right from the jump. I'm good with that. I didn't need you over here spewing your nonsense, your BS. So you've been stomping your feet around because you got my attention. And now I will point you out in videos when you're pushing off misinformation. I also gave you credit yesterday when you were being truthful a couple times. You are so flip floppy, wish washy. You ride that fence post so bad. I'm sure you got fucking road rash on the ass. Jesus. Get off the fence. Stop flip-flopping. If you stand so firm in your conviction, stay there. But that fence you're riding, god damn, give up on it, girly. Uh, Granny, I don't... How can I... Let me see. Hold on. I'm on my phone. Of course I do this when I'm on my phone. Um, settings? No. I don't know how to do it on my phone. Fuck. Oh, pointer lover. Can you reach out to me and email and I'll give you the link and everything and all the information? If you can. Granny, I don't know how to do this. Good. Good. Yeah, Granny, she's threatening with ROs, a cease and desist. She said that somebody, um, another person that she's like throwing in and lumping, she's lumping all of us in the same arena, which fine. Like that's what thin skinned people do. That's totally fine. But you will not include my island with all of this bullying and harassment and CPS. She's claiming that somebody threatened her kids with CPS. 
Oh, we'll be. Yeah, that guy. Something else. True crime Karens. I started calling it out because no parent should have their child clickbaited like she does. Who clickbaits her children? True crime Karens. I would really like to know because I don't. I've never seen it. Thank you for becoming a member. They go, normally they're just shit flown out my ass. Truthfully, I just ramble. <laughs> they're never even sensical. They're complete nonsense. Okay, Granny. I, I don't know how to do it on my phone. <laughs> I'm so ridiculous. Drop a link off my phone. Thank you, Alex. Exactly what Alex said. Is it that hard to understand that people disagree with the bashing of the parents and the daily six hour lives and sexploitation? Personal feelings aside, all creators are doing it. Here's my thing. This is not personal for me. I don't know any of these people. I keep my circle so tiny, it's unbelievable. My mods, there's only been a couple switches over almost two years, like that's it. And even that, I still don't have any bad feelings towards anybody. Like I just am not in that it's not personal. This is your behavior publicly on a platform. That's it. That's all you're exploiting a child and you're using the parents in a very vulnerable situation to do it. Pika, absolutely. Karma comes. See, and I don't even know anything about her past. I couldn't tell you the slightest, nor do I care. And so I, you know, I'm not sure she was reading something, but she didn't show it. Britt, I probably can. I can make you a Kyle and you. Granny, I, I didn't even make me insane. It made me feel like, um, is this, is this real life? Like, Y'all, I'm 41. I have a 21 year old daughter. If she acted like this, I'd smack the ever loving shit out of her and tell her to wake up. Let me be honest. There ain't no way that I would let my child behave this way. I'm, you think I'm treating you like you're a child because you're behaving like a child. I expect better out of her than I do these people online because she's mine, of course. But stop and look at what you're doing. Self-reflection is key and it seems like you just deflect. Deflection. Oh, oh, true crime parents. Gotcha. I was like, I haven't seen anything. She made it sound like people have been doing all this stuff to her children and her spouse and like just complete insanity. I was like, what? Hey, Miss Liverbird. Hey, Finn Kirby. Sorry, guys. Kenzie is in here on a Zoom call, so I'm trying to be careful. Sorry, guys. I'm behind. Your circle is a dot, right? No new friends. Hey, Stitching. Oh, hope for Snoopy. Okay. Yeah, that's too complicated for me on my phone. Flat chest, Granny, how are you? Why do you care about what? Oh, my God. True crime monster. Do you really care about somebody's chesticles? Huh? I know, Marcy, I do. Why are we concerned about testicles? Oh, and by the way, if you are a sub of hers, um, I don't know if it's my chat that she's watching or not. I'm assuming because she was talking a little bit about that in her deleted life. But um, if you are seen or spotted in my comment section, I'm assuming this goes for mine too. So we'll just put it out there for her. You will be blocked from her channel. If any of her people are seen over here, you will be blocked. You will be blocked. I couldn't even believe that. I was like, wait, you're trying to claim an entire community of adults can't go wherever the hell they want. And a lot of them have been coming over here standing up for you. Completely nonsense, but still. Wow, Chica. Yikes. 
Yeah, see, all that shit's so differently. Be fam craziness. It's craziness, y'all. I didn't even know she had this many issues with people. Oh, yeah. It seems like it's the same old story. Every mod, like, she... <laughs> what is happening? We must whisper. <laughs> True kind monster. It's called the dick nose. That's what somebody else calls it is a dick nose. Does it bother you? Are you jealous? That's called allergies and deviated septum and chronic sinus infections. You're welcome. And it was surgery I refused to have. Yeah, that's true, Helen. <laughs> Britt, I will, I'll try to make you one. No, I'm a natural blonde, true kind monster. Are you bored? Are you really concerned about people's looks? Don't you have something better to do? I mean, you can call me flat chested because my boobs hang low. They wobble to and fro. I might be able to tie them in a knot. Can you tie yours in a bow? Do you keep your balls on your desk and a ball washer? Just wondering. Ask him for a friend because CJ seems to. <laughs> right, Pika? Right, exactly, Granny. Like, um, that's all they have? This is just ridiculous. They're exploiting a, over 100 mods in two years? No. <laughs> Janice, please, please do the favor and block me now. <laughs> oh. oh, Heather, I'm so sorry. You got called a bug-eyed bitch? What the fuck, Fit and Kirby? That's such bullshit. Don't be... Monster. You gotta understand, you're cutting down on fake blondes here because, no, I'm all natural. The makeup you see behind me on the desk is my daughter's. I don't even wear makeup. I do my eyebrows, put fake lashes on that I wear for five to seven days. If you want to know more, ask me. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's all natural, baby. That's why none of us care. <laughs> uh, they don't even understand uh Brittany it looks like you could have a never have I ever night if you guys haven't checked out what we did to Molly Go Lightly you might want to go get some entertainment because I like to make this kind this is fun for me and it looks like you've had a lot of problematic behavior and a lot of mods over the years. We could turn you into a never have I ever Britney J style. I mean, if you really want to push this envelope and continue to like make egregious weirdo claims about being bullied on the internet, let me tell you something. You're, what your child is going through because you tried to weaponize that and guilt trip with that. I do not wish that on your child or anybody's child. Kids with special needs, inclusion needs to be taught. But when you are actively cutting down a parent of a special needs child at their most vulnerable time, you are shown no fucking grace. But again, I don't even, I'm not coming after your kids. That's heartbreaking that your children are going through that. I don't wish that on them or anybody else. Not even remotely. I have been very open about what I have gone through with mine. I totally get it. It sucks. But you don't weaponize that on people online because we're not doing that to him, nor would anybody in my household stand for your child going through that. Not me, not my girls, not my spouse. There's not one of us that would get down with your kids being bullied. So when you try to weaponize and try to get sympathy for stuff that's just not happening, that will never happen, it's not going to work. Not going to work here because that will be the road that you meet your end on because people know where I stand. It's very clear. I've always stood on the same side. I will always stay right here. I dedicate my life to caring for kids with special needs. That's who I am. That's part of my identity. That's why I'm passionate about these things. That's why I will not take somebody like you condemning parents who we have no proof have done anything to their child and dragging them for hours on end every night with misinformation. If you were being factual, I wouldn't even have a word to say about it, but you can't. You have pushed off narrative after narrative, created a shit storm about this recorded call of Chris potentially ripping down flyers.
reading your guys' comments now. <coughs> Teresa, that's another thing. That's a, that's a lot of mods. Lisa, I'm almost to that point on the days that I, you guys, there's also a joke over here. My mods give me so much. You guys will never cut me down as much as like we joke and are self-deprecating, okay? It's part of our allure. That's part of the fun. Uh, one of my mods always asks if we could start a GoFundMe for my boobs because uh, I wear terrible bras because I hate them. And one day I almost gave you guys a show with a wind gust because <laughs> the wind caught up and I wear these like in the summer I barely wear clothes because I'm in Arizona. It's hot as hell here, okay? I'm literally in hell. Um, <laughs> I almost flashed the entire So it's a joke with us. Like, you are never going to cut on any of our looks as much as we cut on them. Oh, my God. That's hysterical. Oh, yeah. Then she said, see, she said way too much because she said something about it. She was accused of having an affair with some guy named Big Al. Speaking of allergy pills, let's take them. If you have allergies and a big old dick nose like mine, take your allergy pills. Okay, you guys are nosy assholes, or there's really that many people that don't like this bitch, really? There's 295 of you in here for one of my morning rants. What are you guys doing? She's really not like that much? And you are also going back, uh, Mrs. Ida, I don't, I don't even know what your name is supposed to be, first of all. She says, this is so also juvenile. I've been living my life and disappeared for a while. I, I didn't know you disappeared because I've never seen you before. And you were all still going back and forth. Who's you all? Because I'm not going back and forth with her. I have only been talking about her behavior on a public platform about the misinformation that she puts out. Okay, thank you. What? Cassie. Um, they're the ones that go underneath your natural lash. They're amazing. And the glue is from Flutter Habit. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, Alex has been around forever. She's not just here. Allie, Alex has been here for a long time. She's one of my first, like, oh, I found her. She found me. She... We don't catch each other alive very often, but she's been around forever. So don't even attempt to say that she's just here for this because she's not. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> Revival. <laughs> I'm triggered. Exactly. No shame, Callie Dime. Okay, sorry, I'm catching up. You're a natural redhead. Oh. I don't know, Miss Liverbird. I don't know. Fish eyes. Yeah, this is just wild to me. These people are wild. Hey, Earth. Catherine, hey, I'm with that. Oh, she's talking to other people in the chat that had problems with her. Dago, say that again. None of these parents should be the focus of any of this. Sebastian is the focus and needs to say the focus, period. Thank you. How hard is that for people to get? It's not that hard, you guys. Brittany, it's really not this. It's not that hard. If you, here, here's the thing. If you want me off your ass, which I don't even tend to, like, you just keep giving me life and I barely even... Honestly, in the big scheme of things, I was more focused on CJ than I even was with you. You just throw in stupid shit, like, and do that little giggle thing. That's why I didn't know. I'm sorry if you took offense to me saying I thought you were flirting with. I didn't know anything about your personal life. If somebody said I was flirt flirting with somebody and didn't, I would laugh. I would laugh because obviously they didn't know that I had a significant, like, it's not that deep. Seriously, it's really not that deep. Emily, he's on my list. I am very disappointed, too. He had a... Oh, God. Yeah, we have a lot to get through. Absolutely. There is nothing, absolutely nothing that shows that there's anything nefarious from the parents. Oh, my God. That wind gust almost took me out. Good bras are important. Good bras matter. 
<laughs> and then guess what I did? <laughs> After she started making that joke, I was like, I got a bra off of Timu. <laughs> you guys, I grew up on a dairy farm with a bunch of milk cows, chickens, and pigs. We used to butcher 300 chickens. I used to hunt. I grew up, I was born in North Dakota, raised in Montana. I'm a country Western girl that's become city fed. <laughs> I am, I smash scorpions for fun. Okay. And take videos of it. That's in flip flops with a hammer. All right. I, I'm not really your typical average, like, oh my God, Becky, look at her butt. We're kind of a messy bunch over here and we're kind of good with it. We're all just broken. Broken is beautiful. Oh, Miss It Italy D? Is it Miss Italy D? I don't, I didn't know you were re referencing people in the chat. Sorry, because I'm like, I've never gone back and forth with her. Like, to be honest, like, I don't, I genuinely do not, I have not had one conversation with a single person that has told me like all the ins and outs of everything or like has asked me to do a single, nobody has asked me to do anything. I am pointing out problematic behavior. That's it. And nothing about all of her personal shit. It's just so weird. So weird. Free the tatas. Lady of the Lost Woods. I love that name too. <laughs> you guys are still in the boobs. <laughs> yeah, they better leave Alex alone. Alex is amazing. Alex has always been great to me. Yeah, everybody had their copy. Yeah, I I didn't even know there was that many. The mods, you know, like, what am I supposed to... They're entitled to their... These are... I don't freaking go around wiping my children's mouth after they say something. Blunt runs in my family. Like, when we say something, it just rolls out, okay? It just happens. I'm not going to start babysitting everybody in a chat in their experiences with you. I do not let children be talked about. When we pointed out the irony of you calling out and condemning a mother and then having your children in the background, that's not talking. That was specifically to get you to realize that if you were ever in those shoes, things like that would be weaponized against you the same way you're doing it to Katie. But that seemed to go right over your head. She said, I'm growing my chance. Wait, what? She, did she say that? <laughs> I didn't, if she did say I was growing my channel off of her, I don't know if she did or not, but that's definitely not the key. <laughs> I've been, I've had 5,500 subs for like a year now. I hit 5,000 subs like a year ago and then I've gone up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. <laughs> like it's just, what, what? Yeah, I've July will be two years that I've been on YouTube. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Definitely not growing my channel off you. You're not that important. Growing my channel off the misinformation, sure. Exploiting the exploiters, sure. You can say whatever you want. That though, um, honey, <laughs> that's just great. If she wants to say that, that would be great. I know, Janice, that was before I knew. I know, y'all, just leave me alone. I, it was one time. They never had a chance. I love those scorpions. Doodlebug. My grandma used to say that. She'd be like, I can't tell if it's my knees or my boobs. Yeah, I was actually, okay, delicious. I was born in North Dakota. I was born in Williston, North Dakota. And I grew up in Montana, so I grew up in the Flathead Valley and then also the Bitterroot Valley. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I came into this platform not even realizing who I was up against. Molly Golightly had like 80K. By the time she was gone, I think she was close to 90, but between her two channels, she was at 90K. Like, yeah, that's 
her and Spanky. Spanky was one of LB. Tyler Feller. The list goes on and on. <laughs> Brittany, me and my scorpion hunting in my flip flops. That bothers you. And we I live under an airport, as you can tell. Free the sisters. Yeah, Earth, that's something that I don't have a team. Like, I have a few that I'm really close to that I'll run things by, but I do all of my own content. Everything that I do is my own. It's always been that way. Everything that I've ever said is still up in a video. You can go have at it. Um, yeah. It's not that hard. Oh, just another troll. I have to check that out. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Look at all the women in here talking about their tatas. <laughs> Generally. <laughs> lost it all the mean girls you guys call the mean girls crazy grandma i think everybody can see it your avatar is naked granny isn't that the irony of that i don't know if she said that but if she does say that i that will be an enjoyable laugh Good morning, Claus. You guys crack me up. 50. I'm insulted. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. Teresa, her people. <laughs> I was listening and one of them was like, she's like family to me and I protect my family. Come after me. Come after me. Like all intense last night. And I was like, wait. Granny, I'm almost your age. Like, stop. We're all old ladies over here, okay? Like, I'm not coming after her even. I'm just calling out her behavior. It ain't that deep. Like, but slow down. Like, you're acting like we're like 12-year-old kids on a playground. You stole my swing. They don't even have the merry-go-rounds anymore because they're dangerous. Do you realize most of us this age have head injuries from playground equipment? Okay, don't expect us to be normal. It's just that generation. Monkey bars. Brianna. Uh, probably a girl. It would. I'd probably be accused of flirting with a female before another male. I, chances are, you know, oh well. If the shoe fits, whatever. I do talk about swingers. Brittany, you want something entertaining? Tell everybody I'm a swinger. That will get you some interesting whatever. Because that's a conversation I love to laugh about too. I'm not, but I'm totally cool with everybody else's lifestyle. And I find it interesting. You're born and raised on Tannin? I went to school in Billings too. I've lived all over It's the motion in the ocean. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> yeah, Melissa, just, yes, just recently. That's the only thing. Nobody put her on my radar or anything. Um, I had came up right before Dietz and those guys did. They did a live discussing the racism stuff that was said on her panel about the Proudfoots. She had been in my algorithm because of that on previous lives and I missed that. So when they caught that, I was like, oh, because I had seen problematic things from her before, but I've never even had a conversation with any of those people behind the scenes, never, not once. So nobody like told me about her, asked me to cover her anything. She had just been popping in my algorithm and then they caught that and I was like, damn it, because I had been watching and I was like, I'm glad somebody caught it. And then Tragedy Pimps Exposed recovered it and condensed it into like a more palatable version. So I went over that, but that's the only way, like there's so many people that have been popping into my algorithm that I've never seen before recently. Oh, Alex, I'm so glad. You do a great job though. Keep doing what you're doing. Choo choo pointer lover.
all earth. If she has a conniption over her subs being gone at, she needs to learn a lesson. They're just grown ass adults with opinions too. I don't owe her subs any fucking type of respect, just like I don't owe her any. If you want ass pats, don't come here. Wyoming. OG series on Melissa Jade. See, these are, I don't know how you dealt with people like this, like that. How, how, how did you guys get, how did you put up with people like this? Like she, she tapped out. I think I've done like four videos with her content highlighted. Holy shit. She's tapping out already. Do you even go here? <laughs> Thank you, Cracker Jacks. That's what I was trying to point out. Like, no, never will you ever hear me say that I support anybody weaponizing resources or anything. I think that's ridiculous and immature and such a waste of resources for kids that need them. Like, that's a big complaint of mine across the board. But don't try to lump me in my what I'm calling out or talking about over your behavior, be drug into that arena because you will not attempt to smear me or my reputation. I need your help. <laughs> okay, hold on. Well, that's, you go fix your cat. I'm not I fixing your cat. Me. I'm not licking her. <laughs> she wants me to get clawed by the cat. No, thank you. That is, that's crazy granny's watching. I've never even heard that. Hey, Zero. <laughs> Thanks, Dago. They need the morning labels not to be glue. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> yeah, it's pure speculation, Cracker Jacks. Thank you for realizing this. Like, I've never even seen you before either. And it's refreshing for people to see like this is problematic behavior i could care less about her past fights and i'm not discrediting what any of you have been through with her because it's obviously very problematic and I, your experience with her is 100 percent valid and your experience please understand that i'm not discrediting any of that i just don't have anything personal with her this is not personal for me it wasn't personal with molly it's not personal with spanky it's not personal with any of these people what they do to victims, true victims, like I'm not a victim. Yeah, I was doxxed. Okay, I'm not a victim. These cases, when they try to shut and silence down people confronting them on the misinformation and the harmful things that they do in these cases, that's their weapon, is they dox people, they try to silence people. That's the initial knee-jerk reaction that they have. That shows how much scum they are because they have no care and concern for the families that they do that to. But even other fellow creators, if you confront the BS that they're doing and the misinformation that's harmful to these children's cases, they freak out because it's affecting their bottom line, which again goes to show that they're in it for the money and the clicks and the views. Exploitation sells. And unfortunately, we're seeing that at a high rate. Oh, somebody else in the comment section yesterday, if you're still over here lurking, you said you unsubbed and thought this was JFK and needed to announce your departure. Again, not an airport. <clears throat> but you made the statement that uh, T Rev seven five seven his songs. You had you were enjoying your time until I mocked his songs. Well, guess what? You said in my comment section that the songs were not about him; they were about this. Please listen to the song and the words of the song that he's using because it's all about him. It even says "we" in there in the you know chorus. It talks about him and his experience and what he's doing to help these families, I mean, exploit these families, in my opinion. And he buys his beats and it's auto-tune. Um, and he's using a vulnerable family actively going through one of the worst times of their lives, vulnerable again, and a missing child as a music video. Miss me with the bullshit of simping for that fuck. Uh-uh, not today, not tomorrow, not any day. Nope, nope. Nope. He sucks. And that's period, point blank, end of story. But don't tell me or try to twist my words 
and manipulate anybody over here because it is what it is. I listened to the whole thing. I had to make sure I wasn't losing my mind. Trust me, I did lose my mind after listening to that bullshit twice and realizing that he's exploiting vulnerable people for music. <clears throat> oh, I love the Canadians, y'all. I love the Canadians. We used to go to uh, Regine, Regina, Regina for feed when my dad had the farm. I reckon there are a few true crime creators. Victims cards have expired, to be perfectly honest. Don't you think? Absolutely stitching. Oh, I'm sure she is Thor. Here, kitty, kitty, meow, meow. Come out of the bushes. I'm a cat wrangler, too. Wait, shift happens. That's what they're used to called. What? How are you? Wow, they're called primate bars. Come on. What? What? Didn't anybody else have those? What? What are we doing here? <laughs> we all had those on the playground. What? Oh, Granny's watching. See, I didn't even know that. Oh, that's stitching. That's a crazy story. Melissa Jade, it's wild to me. Like, it's honestly wild to me. But I'll be... Okay, so it's very heavy, that parasocial relationship thing. I don't know. Um, maybe it's a me thing, too. But I see a lot of people looking for... A group to fit in and she really heavily relies on that interaction with her subs so they get a lot of oh thank you so much like some people really need that to feel like they are doing something like that they're needed or they're helping in some way shape or form there's a lot of people that genuinely want to help so some of the subs do it with the best intent but other ones just want to be a part of the exploitation too, like they condone it, they overlook it until somebody around them is going through it. It's so weird. It's such a weird relationship. But I tell you what, if anybody I ever subbed to told me that if I was seen in another chat that I'd be blocked, I'd be like, I'd be personally <laughs> signed up and be like, oh, here I am. Do you see me? Do you need me to send you screenshots of that chat? Because I just went there, block me. Like we are grown ass adults. There ain't nobody telling us what to do. Um. Thor, uh, that Nana, whatever her name is, I can't remember. I'd have to look at the screen. I can't remember what she goes by. Sarah, and then there was some other lady that came up on panel. I can't remember her name either. I don't know those people. Yeah, Miss Italy D, there's, it's not personal for me. Like, a lot of people in the chat actually have personal things, a lot of mods of hers and stuff like that totally understand but for me it's not personal like this is not personal yeah sama you would think self-reflection are is very hard to do i love that most see i didn't even know i am finding so many communities that i had no idea existed Oh, generally, he's on my shit list. Yeah, Cracker Jacks, I, I definitely do not see her as an awareness channel. T-Rev is absolutely disgusting. But he was having a little baby fit last night, too. I don't know what got under him. Is some big channel calling him out that's talking about his music? Because... I haven't seen many people like, and maybe I'm just not in that arena to like see those, but I haven't seen hardly anybody address him at all. Like there's a few of us that have addressed him. Granny's addressed him. 
Uh, Queens address them, I think. I don't know if Deeds has or not. I would have, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I know Granny did. I think Granny did. Maybe I'm wrong. TPE did. Um, but he was he was kind of thrown a fit last night at the end of his life too. The end of his life last night was interesting. People need to be needed. A lot of people, you know, and I, I can't fault anybody for that. Like people are lonely. A lot of people have chronic illness. They're isolated for one circumstance or another. Like I'm not, I get it. I totally understand it. But at the same time, it becomes super toxic, super fast. Hey, Shay. Thank you, Jennifer. See, I don't know anything about Enfy. I, I will be honest. Oh, okay. I was like, shift, wait, what did I say? That's something that I, I will not tolerate. So I was like, oh God, please tell me I wasn't saying anything wrong. Oh, and she's talking about people reporting her and like, she's kind of doing the dog whistle for reporting. Um, I mean, you can do whatever you want, false striking that will take your channel faster than I will. I don't play that game. I don't strike. I don't report. Never been that way. I've shown my whole back office. Like, I, I just don't do that shit. <clears throat> yeah, Kimberly, that cracked me up. That is exactly what it gave me. Like, tell me your cult without telling me your cult when you're going to fucking block people from having an opinion that might differ from you. What? LDS all over again. Have a good day shift. Good morning, Patty. That spirit box pisses me off just as bad as this little fucking bird. Oh, uh, I really like Alex. Alex is a sweetheart. I wish I could be as sweet as a lot of these ladies around me. They're really sweet. Alex is super sweet. All of these people are like sweet and calm and collected and like professional. Not me. Y'all, we are too old to be gift wrapping our feelings and opinions to strangers. If something was to happen to me tomorrow, at least you know where I stand and I stood fully there. Ten toes down in the manure. Okay? I'm right there. No questions about where I stand. Everybody knows when they come in here. And if you don't, you're going to learn really fast. They can already tell where I'm headed. A none, Chica, none. She takes zero responsibility. Okay, so anybody that's coming back in here, I'm discussing Brittany J's little sympathy manipulation, emotional manipulation lives. Please do not. If I fuck with you, well, I already know that you would never do anything, anything remotely close to threatening children. Like, that's just not how we get down but hey Brittany J you can hook up with this girl, girl named Veda Jade perfect for you she'll tell you that I've been exposed over 18 times and she's done it she'll give you all the dirt please run with it <laughs> please do <laughs> revival's gonna kick me in the kneecap <laughs> Oof, da, Layla. Don't be calling me out on my speech. I've lost my Nodak accent for the most part. <laughs> she can, she'd be a perfect mod for you. She's got internet sleuthing skills. She attaches trackers to emails to track people down. She'd be perfect up your alley. She's been a computer graphics technician. <laughs> I'm going to hell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's already here, just another troll. She's it's that single white female moment. <laughs> Mrs. R <laughs> shit. Ouch.
No, AT, AKA Athlete Troy. Is it supposed to be Ashley or is it Athlete? I've been wanting to ask you that. Erin, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. She said who supposedly was behind these emails, but no. <laughs> Helen's like, I'm going to kick you too. <laughs> oh, Brie, I miss that. You validate me. I pay you. That validates you. <laughs> Brie, I hope you're doing okay today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Y'all, this is, this shit makes my day. Like, this is therapy for me. People need to realize that this is therapy for me. I don't, I don't think, I can't even remember the last time I told you guys to hit the like button. I always forget. I never ask for like subs, anything. Like I, you guys give to me and you guys provide so much for me. I hope you understand that. Like, this is seriously therapy for me. It's healing, and I know that sounds so fucked up, which is okay. I'm fucked up, okay? Yes, Callie Dime, we got a whole row saved for us. I got a meme that I'm going to post later that says, I've been practicing taking hot showers, so I'm ready for hell when I get there. <laughs> and Britt, if you, want, if you want to talk or debate religion, let's do it. I would love to do that. We can absolutely. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I, I say stupid shit, okay? Nobody's ever questioned that. That's that's typical Becky. Oh, somebody also asked what I prefer to be called. My real name is, of course, Becky. Well, it's Rebecca, but I only get called that when my, I'm in trouble with my mama. And then she says, Rebecca Joe. Like it's a cuss word. God, that still sends shivers down my spine. Um, most people call me Becky, but you can call me nonsense. Most people on YouTube because they feel weird about using my real name, which I could care less. Um, you can call me nonsense. You can call me Contessa. You can call me whatever you want. You can call me Tanya Harding. Skank ass Tanya Harding. That works too. It is, Nancy Drew, it is. Right, Hope for Snoopy? That would be great. Sammy, it's so weird. I Okay, question to those in the, or in the chat that know her. Is this typical for her when her money is dwindling to like put herself in these cases? Like somehow now, once again, we have people injecting themselves as if they're a part of this and then they do these emotional, sympathetic, like, pulls and claim that they're a victim of something. Meanwhile, there's a missing child that they've been exploiting. Is this her typical stick? Like, when she gets confronted over shit she does publicly? Is this typical? I'm assuming so. Don't, don't forget the skank. Skank ass Tanya Harding. <laughs> Kyle asks... Brie, Kyle asked if that was uni doing music last night. <laughs> oh, another thing I'm going to address. Somebody came in my comment section and said I needed to call Katie Joy out. What's this? Hold on. Um, somebody said something to the effect of I needed to call out Katie Joy because what she's doing um, to the Brown family. First and foremost, I've addressed this many times. I'm not Katie Joy. I'm not Katie Joy's handler. I want nothing to do with Katie Joy. I don't think that anybody's religious trauma should be a reality TV show. I think that it's a meme for a horrible, disastrous ending. Secondly, I have personal feelings on that situation. It's disgusting. It is what it is. I've never called her out. I don't watch her anything to do with her. I couldn't tell you the slightest of what she's doing. I'm assuming she's exploiting a very tragic incident that happened with the Browns as of recently. She's not the only one, unfortunately, doing it. I've seen that pop up in my feed too. Not hers, but other people calling her out who in my, um, they're basically doing the same thing she is, meanwhile, calling her out for exploiting that, but they're exploiting it themselves. Suicide should not be exploited. Mental illness is a discussion that needs to be had more often. 
very realistically. So many people deal with suicide ideation, especially with religious trauma. <clears throat> I have a really hard time. Sorry, you guys. I have a frog in my throat. Might be a toad. Anyways, with people using trauma like that from cults for reality TV shows, I've talked very openly about that. I find it to be highly disturbing, highly disgusting, because these people are not healing. These people have not healed. And then they're put in the public sphere and dealt with all the public perception about their lifestyles. And they condemn them to hell and back. And these people are still trying to just navigate exiting cult lives. That is such a hard arena. Okay, thank you. That is something that is very extreme. So I blame a lot of people for exploiting people's pain and suffering with these reality shows around cults. Yes, it brings some type of awareness. I will give you that. However, it does not highlight the true pain and suffering that these people go through. It puts a little palatable bow on it for your consumption of these people's pain and trauma. In my thought, that will never be acceptable because that is not how this actually looks. The pain and suffering that these people truly go through in these cults, leaving these cults, escaping these cults, being born into families like this, that is lifelong. And it's not gift wrapped for reality TV. There's so much underneath that. So I don't even watch any creators that cover anything to do with that because I find it to be highly disgusting. That's why I always thought it was funny when people thought I was Katie Joy because uh, uh nope. I actually talk about the foundation of cults, the reality of the pain and suffering because I've been there. Um, I still deal with it. I don't like any of that, but to expect me to call out Katie Joy is so weird and random when I couldn't tell you the slightest what her content is. I couldn't tell you a year ago. I'm not going to be able to tell you now. I don't watch her. She's not for me. Uh, totally different personality type. But don't expect me to do things because you had an assumption that somehow I was affiliated with her, which I never was for a year. Um, it's just fucking weird. It's so weird. I do because I never want to mistake. Like, I know most of my mods' real names. I never want to mistake you guys, and I just get in the habit of it. Okay, you guys are all saying, yes, she does that. Okay, that's what I thought. Oh, and by the way, too, for those of you around here, like we joke about the number 18 and penises. We used to play trivia. And if you didn't know the answer, everybody just yelled penis. That's a thing. Um, the island came about because none of us understood. We'd get asked what community are you from or blah, 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 blah. No. Oh, there's another girl you could hook up with, Brittany. Her name's Erica Genevieve. She uh, took panel about a year and a half ago. It'll be two years in November. And told everybody I called CPS on her 211 times. I've never called CPS on anybody but myself. And that was to ask for resources for my kids. So uh, check again. She had no proof of it. They found out it was a big old lie. They all looked like idiots. But that's another one you can go ask for information. She'll, she'll provide you all sorts of amazing stuff. <laughs> mm. Oh, just another troll. Wow. Yeah, 40K. Yeah. Um, LJ UB, I, I don't know what your name, 268. So I have a few questions. If we're not supposed to harass special needs moms like Katie Proudfoot, why harass BJ? First of all, this is not harassment. The definition of harassment isn't um, criticizing somebody's public statements of actual harassment on a victim's family. She is not a victim. She is a creator who signed onto this platform of her own volition, her own free will. She is making public statements about a family that law enforcement has not stated that there's any proof to her allegations. She continues to put misinformation off. Um, first and foremost, her being a mother, all of us, for the most part, a lot of us are mothers. Um, just because you're a mother of a special needs child that doesn't give you a gold star that says you are free to harm other people. Um, I, I don't, if I'm being honest, that's kind of like the silliest 
comment ever, not ever, there's been way more, but the assumption that just because she has a special needs child, she should be given some sort of ass pat to say, you're free to attack all these other vulnerable people who are actual victims going through one of the worst times because you have a special needs child when she's been using her misinformation of her own experiences and trying to put them on this child and condemn the mother. It's never going to mix. I, I don't even understand how you could think one would. I, I'm not sure. Absolutely, Pika. Yes, Sammy, mental health for men, the conversations need to happen. Addiction, um, the stigma needs to go. Like if we want people to learn inclusion, the one thing I will say is she said something about like, you can't even like, how am I expect, expected to teach my kids that things get better when adults do this? First and foremost, two distinct differences here. Kids with special needs, kids of all generations, any type, without special needs, anything. Inclusion is needed for all. Hatred is taught. 100% hatred is taught. However, you also should be teaching your children to stand up for what they believe in, no matter if they have special needs or not, to stand firm in their beliefs. Independence is really necessary and teaching them that it's okay to have strong feelings and emotions and express those emotions in healthy ways and talk about those things. Trying to invalidate other people because of your own behavior and try to put some like weird spin on it that you can't even tell your kids that things are going to get better because you're having people criticize your public. That's never going to no, I'm not responsible for anything that's happening to your child. Nobody else is on the internet. Well, I hope nobody else is on the internet, that they're not. Real life is never going to be okay for me. But that's a, that's a thing as parents, we all have to teach our kids that inclusion matters, how to have a strong conversation and stay true to your convictions and that you don't have to take other people's shit. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm raising very strong-willed girls that say what the hell they say. And they're so kind and they're so respectful. The, I don't talk about this shit in front of my kids. Like they, they'll they know about Sebastian. They know about Sebastian. They don't know about all the people cutting everybody down. They, the one does know about, because she called all you stupid, that say that you know so much about autism. The one that has autism because she's like, wait, what? because people are just trying to blanket it and it looks so different. And that's what we've been trying to, we try to teach our kids that. And here's adults like that can't even get that concept. Oh my gosh, Teresa, he was replaying that live. Hi, hoodie and a crowbar, back to work. Love dust. I couldn't tell you. I don't know. Yeah, Perry, the blame game for me is really not a good thing. Sorry, reading your guys' comments. I can't believe there's this. Are you guys that bored? Yeah, Aaron, I... <laughs> I, it's so weird to me. Oh, thank you, Love Dust. Yeah, I, kids, like, to even attempt to, like, try to put that on me, though, that her kids, like, I feel horrible that your kids are going through struggles. Trust me, like, that, that is where my heart lies, that kids deserve so much better. And I'm sorry that your children are going through that. Genuinely sorry. Like, I don't want that for any child let alone yours or anybody else's. That's why I'm strict against, no, they, they don't need to do that. But to try and mix it together with you getting confronted about the public words that you've been using against another mother, I just can't wrap my head around how you think that you get a pass for your behavior, meanwhile, continuing to condemn people at the worst time of their life. I, it just never works. 
Yeah, Miss Arnold, I'm I'm seeing that. Well, Andy, uh, I'm I need to have a talk with you about that. I would love to know more about that. My doctor offered me that. I actually scheduled rescheduled my Botox. I'm finally gonna get it done. I had a tester done, and I'm gonna finally conform and have it done. I'm gonna try it for migraines, so we'll see how it goes. I'm a little nervous though, but I had a shot in my shoulder and a tester and it, I didn't have a reaction. So I would love to know more about that though. You're bored? <laughs> hey, Grandma Sherry. Love Dust, I don't know who that is either. I've seen them around a couple times, um, but I, I couldn't tell you anything more than that than I've seen them around a few times. Never had. Oh, wait, I have, I think I have emailed with Dark Coast before, but nothing, like way before, and nothing to do with this. I think it was when I might have called out Jim Terry or did a few streams on Jim Terry. Oh, Cassie, microdosing is amazing. Um, I've never tried it personally, but I've heard really good things about it from a lot of people. Hell, whatever, whatever has to, <coughs> Jennifer, so does my daughter. My daughter does too. Yeah, I, I just can't understand this whole shit and thing with her. Hey, Shay, good morning. All right, y'all. Is there anything else I need to address? Is there anything else that you guys heard that was said? Cassie, I've heard a lot of a lot of good things for it. Um, I don't even know all of the ins and outs. Yeah, it's um, it's a form of mushrooms that is used in a very like low dose. Again, this is not medical advice. This is not professional anything. This is nothing. This is just a discussion. Um, they're the hallucinogenic mushrooms that they use just a small amount of. It helps with chronic pain, migraines, and all sorts of stuff. They've been testing it for quite some time. They're actually testing like LSD and stuff for mental illness. And it's, they've shown some really good progress on different things with that too. They're testing all sorts of stuff. Yeah, it helps with, it's supposed to help with all sorts of stuff. Um, I know people that use it for fibromyalgia I also know people that use it for mental health issues. Like there's a lot of different things. It's called microdosing. Yeah. It's just a variation. Google it. You'll find out a ton of information on it. I don't even know who Mallory is, Pepper. Is that Mallory in here? Is that malicious? Is that Ma I don't even know if that's her name. I'm just... See, I don't know. I don't know who Mallory is. But by the way, y'all, I just found Malicious Intense channel last night and what an adorable young lady she is. Educated, smart, sweet, talks about stories that don't get a whole lot of attention. Absolutely adored. That's her. Oh, hell. Oh, she wants to fight. See, I just found her. Some of y'all remind me of my daughter and it's so cute because Kenzie's the sweet side of me um, at times, but she is so sweet. Really? She's not, she's not sweet. I think she's super sweet. She was really sweet last night. Yes. Okay. Dark horse. That's what I was like, wait, I know we talked. Yes, 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 Dark Horse. Thank you. I knew we had talked, but I couldn't, when I started thinking about it, I was like, I can't remember. Sound of Freedom, Sound of Fraud, AKA. <laughs> you guys are so funny. You guys have seasons. Season one, season two. Dark Horse, um, was that email that she was reading last night factual? And from you? 
if you don't want to answer publicly either, you don't have to, you don't owe me anything. I'm just curious because she was making a whole show out of it and never showed the email. She just claimed that she was reading it. Callie, she's, I, I'm trying to be nice. Kenzie is ornery as hell. It's in the last, she deleted one of her lives, but then it's at the very end of her live stream from last night. She was saying that you were emailing her threats about CPS and all of this stuff, and she was reading them out loud. Alluding to the fact that you were going to call CPS and she was going to head to the courthouse today to get cease and desist and ROs and all this stuff. Okay, thank you. You don't have to, again, like you don't owe me anything. It's your personal things with her. I know nothing about it, but I was just curious because I was like, whoa. And then they're talking about the island and I was like, wait, what? She never did though, yeah. Estee Lauder. Are you make it are you a makeup artist, Miss Italy D? Sorry, I'm just reading your guys' stuff here. What is the thumbnail, Layla? Oh, the cow <laughs> with the sunglasses. Oh, uh, that's wishful. That was one of the littles. That's not Kenzie. That's one of the littles. Yeah, Miss Arnold, I'm kind of wondering about that. <laughs> Brianna. Only parts of stuff to us mods too. Okay, question right quick, just so I know what I'm dealing with. Do they have a Discord and like a mod chat? Is that how she controls everything? Absolutely, Wendy. Well, and to a point though, with the offline thing, um, I don't agree with the going real life. Like I've had it done to me and thankfully I knew what I was getting into on the internet. Like I've been around long enough to understand that people just, especially when you are criticizing people over exploitation of cases that are prof they're profiting from and highly profiting from, um, people get crazy because they can't handle it. Like they just while out and go for the doxing, the jobs. Like I knew that real life was going to get serious. I don't think anybody should have to go through that. Unfortunately, expect it. Yes, because it's people can't handle it. They just can't. And they see that they're, these are the type of people who think they're entitled to make a career out of exploiting missing children and their vulnerable family members that's the type of arena that they're in to begin with. Those people don't think logically and have this entitlement factor that shouldn't even exist. So it sucks. I don't, I, we know it happens. We know it happens all the time. I don't agree with it. It should be able to stay online. I keep my shit online. I'm going to call you out over the words that you're using. I'm going to use your own words to show what an idiot you are and what an asshole you look like and how far you're willing to take the exploitation. That's all the further. Like this ain't personal for me. I would never know. I would never know who she was today, tomorrow. I wouldn't hang out with these people in real life. I, just being truthful. Multiple mod chats. What? See, I don't know nothing about NC. Love, not hate. I missed that. That happened with Dark Horse the other night. Thank you, Dark Horse. Again, you don't owe me nothing. I was just asking. So don't feel like you have to do. Congrats, Miss Italy D. That's amazing, though. My daughter, uh, my 21-year-old, she dabbles in makeup. She started a makeup page, and she she's super, super talented with makeup. Um, and she did it kind of like as therapy She's got many medical issues, but she uh, hasn't been doing it much 
lately, but she loves makeup too. So congrats. That's amazing. I am not talented in that arena whatsoever. I can glue the lashes on and I can put my eyebrows on. That's it. Wow. See, that's too much to keep up with. So is this like 24 seven her thing? Is that like, I'm assuming this is her sole job. Okay. Which is whatever. Oh, dark horse. I gotcha. Absolutely. Melissa Jade. I'm the same way. Like I could care less about that stuff. Like, and for me relationships, that's why I don't have a huge circle because the relationships I have formed, they take relationships, take work. You want them to flourish. Like I don't just jump into a relationship and even a friendship relationship. I want to be able to give back and be a part of that relationship. I just don't collect, I don't go around collecting names to say they're my friends for any reason. Like I want to get to know like a lot of my real life friends, my internet friends, like I've met a lot of people I've met online in real life. I have some great friends. And it's just, you nurture those relationships. And I don't know, I'd rather have a tiny little section though, any day of the week. 52 mods leave. Yeah, you guys in these mods, like I cannot even, 100 mods leave. See, I cannot, cannot understand this. Thank you, Miss Italy. I'll share one of these days with you guys. Maybe I'll have it. Kenzie is a doll. Wow, Heather, Heatherlicious. That's actually sad. Yeah, Layla, that's, there's a lot of that that happens, it seems. Terry Jewel, who annoys the shit out of you? Oh. Yeah, Melissa, absolutely agree with you. Thank you, Dark Horse. See, and that's the thing, Miss Italy. I would not even, I, I couldn't tell you who is from her chats or anything as far as that goes. Because when I'm in there, I'm focused on the things she's saying and the comments she's putting. Sometimes I will, like, if she's saying something in, like, response to her comment section, I will notice and then, you know, oh, okay, but I I won't recognize the name of her subs. I can't tell you who her subs are. I can't tell you any of the interaction they have. I can very rarely even point out a single mod of hers. Muscles and Mascara is the only one that, like, registers for me because she's been a mod for people that I find problematic, like Spanky, who is Justin of Justice for All. Um, otherwise, none of it registers. Like, it's not that deep. <laughs> There's just, I have no idea. Wow. I know, Janice. I know. Same thing, too. Your help. Come here. Oh, God. Here comes Kenzie. See, that's so sad. That's so sad. Okay, I'm going to go hold this cat. Hold on. Oh, Penny... Yeah, that's, that's very true. I, uh, I think people, I have, the one thing I will have to say is I have followed my gut for the majority of okay. what I have found. Have to put them down. I have, where is she? Where are we going? I need help carrying my bed. Oh my God. It's freaking heavy. You expect me to have muscles this morning? It's heavy. I can't. Y'all, I just broke my ankle. I'm just joking. I'm trying to get out of lift in this heavy box. My back's broken. I can't move. CJ, can I borrow your bubble? She's trying to make me work. So is this whole live and chat about another creator giving Lana vibes in here? Crimes and conspiracies. 
I recognize your name from a bunch of smut, uh, misinformation, cronies' lives. I've seen you all over lately pushing off misinformation and speculation about uh, the parents going through a really traumatic time. Um, this life can be whatever you want it to be. I'm coming. It can be whatever you want it to be in your wildest dreams. It can be, you can rewind and find whatever you feel necessary. Um, this live is truthfully about misinformation and Brittany J emotionally manipulating people. And uh, Kenzie, Kenzie just broke her back. I didn't have to do it. Thought it got me out of work. Thank you. Um, but it is about people who continue to exploit true crime cases and then try to turn and play the victim themselves and once again take the focus off of the victim. Get out of the way, kitties. Because this is heavy and it would smash. Kiki, don't get smashed. You'll be a smash burger. <gasps> Give me 150. Now you're just talking out your neck. Um, no, normally I talk on my ass. Get it straight. And my ass is usually pretty factual. <laughs> Show them my desk. How big it is. Hold on, I gotta turn my camera around. Settings. Kenzie just bought a new desk because she's crazy. It's heavy. It's like a huge L-shaped desk for like a PC and everything. <laughs> Sis, there's the crazy cat. Jesus. I'm not going to be able to set this up in my room. People. Have they been trying to get attention for a while? I've seen them around. I don't care, y'all. Now you're just talking out your neck. Who talks out their fucking neck? Really? Like, what's that mean? That's that's not even. I know people say that, but that's so nope. It's blue. Nope. Get that away. Nope. Hoodie and your crowbar, right? She's she's doing it. Kenzie over here with their first big girl purchase. <laughs> no, she's her and her desk. She had a desk in there, but she rearranged her room. She's so ridiculous. She's so silly, that child of mine. <laughs> so I'm still like stuck on this, like, what the fuck does talking out your neck mean? No. Dude, I talk on my ass, all right? What? Oh, you guys want to see my cats? You guys, I have a zoo. That's why. No. Want to see the crazy kitties? Here. Most of y'all know them. I'll show you guys really quick. My house is a fucking mess. Okay. Oh, well. Here you go, Brittany. Oh, and by the way, Brittany also stated that you know why I don't turn my camera on? You know why? Because they take the worst angles and they screenshot them and use them for thumbnails. Okay, let's have a heart to heart for a moment because you're, uh, you're a lot younger than me, obviously, or extremely insecure. Who gives a shit about what other people say about your looks? I don't even know enough about your looks to even I don't have a clue. You could be Jennifer Aniston for all I know. I, I don't care. Everybody's beautiful in their own way, shape, or form, okay? I don't care about your looks. But if you're that insecure about people clipping you and taking thumbnails, I do it to myself. I will take terrible pictures and turn myself into other things. You need to learn to laugh about people's opinions of you because it doesn't matter. We all have double chins. We all have insecurities. Not a single soul is perfect. But stop using excuses that are so ridiculous. If you can't laugh at that shit and say, oh, well, people that love you and like you and fuck with you, 
they see that shit and they don't care. They don't care. The people who ride with you ride with you. They find that shit funny. Not because it's mocking you or your looks or anything, because it's not who you are. The inside is more important than the outside. And if you're ugly on the inside and on the outside, well, that's a double whammy and whatever. That's that's a whole nother story. That's a Molly Golightly situation. But stop. Like, stop being so concerned about what other people say about your looks. And don't try to put that shit on me because I don't even know enough about your looks. And bitch, I have FUPA cam over here. Very proudly. I have a FUPA. I'm short and I have a big old FUPA. And we turn the camera on and we call it the FUPA cam. Because love your body. And stop being so insecure about that shit. You need to learn to laugh. Nobody gives a fuck. It's not that serious. If you think that one thumbnail with your face at a bad angle with double chins is going to ruin your integrity. Well, you didn't have any to begin with. It's not the picture that's ruining your integrity. It's you that ruined that, not the photo. Fuck, oh dear. Whoa, you got a mess. I know, I have to fold my laundry. The OCD child has a mess in the room. Take this dust apart. You got you, oh here, kitties. That's what I was showing you. This is Luna. Normal popcorn stuff. This is this is Luna. Say hi, pretty girl. Okay, let's go find the other ones. <laughs> That's Dexter. Dexter is rotten, and you will hear him. Don't call the AS actually do call the ASPCA. Please, please call them because he's really annoying and he's breaking the bank because he likes treats. This is Biella. This is my baby. This is Isabella. This is the feral colony cat. This is Smush, who is new to us. She is a rescue. She lived in a colony outside of our neighborhood and got a really bad infection. Kenzie noticed she was limping, rushed her to the emergency vet, and then she had to be in a cone for two weeks and she ended up now being a part of the house. So this is Smush, that's why she's got the cropped ear because she was fixed and then trapped and released. That is Smush, she's just a, a blob, but she doesn't wanna go back outside, so she's here too. Now we have, where are the other two? That's Eclipse. This is Luna's sister, the Luna and her actual sisters. We got them on the same day. They're all rescues. This is Eclipse and she is a wackadoodle. She is hysterical, super cute, super funny. Um, and where is Kiki? So where's Kiki? Kiki? Are you in here? Right here. Okay, let's go find Kiki. Don't mind my house, it's a mess. Oh, and here's Kiki. On top of my, you better not jump on my monitor, bro. Kiki, say hi. Kiki is also a rescuer who was found on the job site. And he runs the house. He doesn't know what he is. He doesn't know if he's a dog, cat. He no. is the pain in the butt. That is my zoo for those of you that had only seen one cat. Absolutely, Helen. If you're ugly on the outside, it don't matter. Oh Smush is so cute. Dexter is such a pain in the ass. He wants a treat. Oh, yeah, Terry, that's... I have a zoo. They are spoiled ass rotten. <laughs> yeah, none is right on that one. Normally you see the, the other side of Kiki. Kiki normally has his ass in the camera. If you ever see a booty hole in the camera, it's Kiki. He's got issues. I'm already giving up. And he likes to show his... Kenzie at one point in time said that she wanted to go work for Ikea as a furniture putter together for their displays because she loves to put, 
She likes to put furniture away. She just opened the box and she said, "Out now." She says, says "Nope, not today." <laughs> she rethought that. Well, come here, look. No, ma'am. You're so funny. <laughs> She's like, "Nope." Okay, hold on. Uh, so I have to unscrew the drawers, two of them, and then I have to first take all world the stuff problems. out of here and then unscrew the top from this. So this is her, this is, she's got a mess. And yes, my baby lives at home. Your friend is the cutest, Janice. She miss, oh. makes me miss Chloe. You're highly allergic to cats. Sorry. I wasn't a cat person until I started ending up with a million of them, and now I have a whole zoo. So I had, we lost um, my Mackenzie's emotional support animal. We lost her a few months ago, and that was a really hard hit. But then this little one, we actually have some feral cats that she takes care of outside, too. This is, she's got a sister outside named Charlie that we feed to, and then there's another, a couple other ones. But these are the girls. Are you showing any pictures of the outfit cats? No, I don't have pictures. That's Eclipse and Kiki and Smush and Dexter with his treats and Bella. Yeah, I will see. Kenzie, do you have, oh, hold on. Let me look. I don't know if I can log in on this device. I might have to go to my computer. Do you want me to read them, Dark Horse? Or would you like me just to confirm what was said? Um, shit, where is it? Hold on. I never use my iPad very often, so. That's a, that, Laura, it's a screwdriver. Identity issues also? Yeah, right. Just confirm she's embellishing. Okay. Let me look here. I'm not clogged. I'm not logged in on my iPad at all. Where's my mail? Come on. These planes are super loud. There was an air show on Sunday morning and it was like seven o'clock in the morning and I'm like, oh, this is so annoying. I have no idea. Last time I checked, you just said my name was mom, not find my iPhone. You've always been missing a screw. Your screws have been loose for a long time, kiddo. Come by that naturally. Okay, hold on. Downloading Gmail on my iPad. She deleted or privated the first live sh she did. She did a whole like 30 minute rant and then deleted that one and then did a second one. And at the end of the, fr uh, the end of the second, she kind of comes back around to it. And that's when she talks about the stuff with Dark Horse Justice. She deleted it. Ugh. Why, why do people do that? I don't, I don't get it. Not so sure. Okay, got it. I'm reading them. Okay, um, yeah, this is really personal between the two of you, it seems. I truthfully don't want to get involved in there because you did say a lot of the things that she said you did. I can kind of, from what you're saying, see why you felt that way, but you have a relationship with her that is 
way more personal on a personal level. So your care and concern or whatever you're addressing in these emails wouldn't be how I would go about it at all. Um, not so much at all. Um, but truthfully, she's not embellishing and neither are you. It's just a very personal relationship. Seems like that went south. So that's what I'm going to say on that. I think she's using that. Um, she's going to use that against you, of course, um, because you said what you said. I mean, obviously, there's more to your guys' relationship that has stuff going on. Um, I, I would, I would please ask though, please think through like what we see and please understand that this is, I don't know her, but this is just my stance on everything. Obviously she's a good mother. You can have your difference of opinion. From what I see, I don't have, just like Katie Proudfoot, if I'm giving Katie the benefit of the doubt, even though we might hear things that could be problematic or X, Y, Z about their parenting style, that doesn't give me the right to turn them into CPS. The only time that I would ever involve resources is if a child was actually in danger or there was harm to that child. Just because we don't agree with somebody's parenting style, the time they keep their put their kids to bed, all of that stuff, doesn't mean that they're a bad mom. Two things can happen at the same time. A person can be a shitty person, a bad creator, and a wonderful parent. Somebody can be a shitty, shitty person person. So I have no indication that Brittany's not a good mom. From what I have seen, the only thing I pointed out was the fact that if she was ever in Katie's shoes, those same things that she weaponizes against Katie would be used against her. I have no right to say anything about her parenting. I would never involve CPS unless there was a safety threat to her children. I don't do that online. I think that's ridiculous because we see such a what people want us to see about their lives that we really truly don't know what's going on. <clears throat> Obviously, her kids are in social programs, so I would leave that to the experts um, if something needed to be done. I don't think that YouTube should ever go to that point for anybody. I don't want anybody to have to deal. My girls. <sighs> CPS has been involved in our lives, not on my behalf, before I took them. And knowing what that did to them and the fear and trauma that it puts them through isn't something that's minor. These, that's a huge thing. It's a massive thing. And to watch people on YouTube nonchalantly weaponize it against each other, I can't get behind it. I just can't. It's a waste of resources because, again, we see such a little fragment. Kids were on spring break. I just, does that make sense? I know, I know. I get that dark horse, but I'm just saying like, I don't want, I, I appreciate you being forthcoming and I get it. Like, that's why I said it's a very personal thing, but please just think about the kids for a moment because they don't deserve, and I know you are, like that's where your care and concern is coming from. It's obvious in this email. However, don't let your, better judgment get the best of you in an emotional spot because all you're giving her intentional or like unintentionally is more ammunition to cry the victim. There's so many kids that need CPS that need our nervous system is fucking broken. No kid needs to be stuck in that cycle unless they absolutely that's a last resort and CPS can provide resources or do something to help those kids. It is so traumatic. It's such a traumatic experience. So I really advise people to really understand, like we see such a part and some of you know her way better than I do. So you and have had personal relationships. I'm just talking from a creator to a creator, talking about what is put out publicly and what we know. I have no indication, just like with Katie. I'm going to give grace until there's something otherwise. I wouldn't cut Brittany down the way she's cutting Katie down. Never. I don't know what she's like as a parent. I have nothing to judge on that. <coughs> yes. 
Um, hamburger. For what? Lucy, I totally think you are wrong. Um, there's no indication that they know where they're at. Absolutely, Christina, it can be. Thank you for being honest about that dark horse. And I totally see, like, I can see. I just had to say that, though, because I don't want, I see what, where your care and concern came from, and you addressed that privately to her. She brought it publicly to try and victimize herself and say, you know, that's, you guys obviously have a personal relationship and you were addressing care and concern. That's fine. She's using that though and playing the victim by doing that. It just gives her another like, look at me, whoa, I'm the victim type of shit. And kids don't deserve to be caught in the midst of all of that. I know, Dark Horse. I appreciate you being open and honest. Absolutely, Tammy Lou. It does. It causes trauma. Yeah, Christy, I, I'm not discounting that at all. Like Dark Horse, y'all, Dark Horse can share if she chooses to what is in her email. She did it from, you can see that she was, you know, trying to address Karen. Hey, D, it's good to see you. Uh, Lucy, okay, um, we can go here. I can, I can give you my thoughts on that because law enforcement usually does not let the family of a missing child search. First and foremost, the narratives that have been spun about Chris and Crady, why aren't they being spun about Seth? If you want to look at this from an unbiased angle and actually look at all the details, there's problematic inconsistencies with across the board. The witch hunt and the sharpening the pitchforks after Chris and Katie is getting nowhere because obviously... According to law enforcement, the data proves that Chris was not there. You can run with all of the conspiracies in the world. Obviously, he didn't just float out of the house. I am still in the camp that I hope he is still alive, that he did run off. Something happened that he will be returned home. Anything of that nature. I'm so hopeful that he is still alive. However, to try and target Chris and Katie off of some stuff that the Internet has ran with, there's just not proof. There's not evidence to show that they did anything. If we are actually taking what is factual known about this case, there's not facts or evidence to indicate that they did anything to him. And that's truthful. Christina, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for being here, Heather. I appreciate the transparency, Dark Horse, so much, so much. You didn't owe me that at all. And I appreciate you being honest. And that says a lot to me. I'm sorry you were treated poorly over there. And I'm sorry that you were, you know, being drugged because she's choosing to weaponize this. It sounds like that's kind of her stick. Just don't give her that. Don't give her that at all. Because um, she will use it. It seems like she weaponizes any little thing like that. But please understand that for anybody, and this is across the board, you're taking away, and I'm not saying this to Dark Horse, I'm saying this to all the lurkers in the back who do this fuck shit because there's a lot of you that do this shit and keep the bullshit going between people too. You'll amp Britney up under an alt, then you'll run in and be your best friend and do all that shit. That's shady shit. Stop. That's gross. Not addressing anybody specifically, but I've seen it done so many times. But weaponizing or using resources like that that are so underfunded and so necessary because we do have so many kids out here in foster homes, we have so many, it's, there's just not enough resources, period, point blank, end of story. And to use them over internet words is not cool, not cool at all. But I really appreciate you being transparent, Dark Horse. That says a lot about, yeah, Miss Italy, it absolutely can. And I've called them myself when I said that earlier, I'm not lying when I said, Kyle and I have talked about that openly. Um, I've actually been at my wit's end because resources are so hard to find for kids with special needs. I've called and opened up a resources only case with CPS in Utah when we lived there because I needed help. I was desperate for any type of anything for my girls because I want them to have the most independent, functional, I will knock every door down I can. But 
you can have a really negative outcome too with CPS. It's just, you don't know. And our system is so broken that it's not a risk unless somebody is really in danger. Something really like I'm a mandated reporter. Some of the rest of you in the comments are too, but I don't take that as I'm (laughs) going to start randomly weaponizing that against people on YouTube. That's so silly. We are adults. I will only ever use that if it comes to care and concern of somebody in real life that I know, elderly abuse, things of that nature, kids that are being actually harmed, not just what the internet is saying, because people get caught up in narratives and run with them. And they can turn, just like they're doing to the Proudfoots, for instance, they can turn you into complete monsters if that's the narrative they want to stick on you. And we don't have any indication that they're guilty of anything. Christy, that's true. But at the end of the day, too, structure and stability is absolutely needed. Could there be a lot to criticize there? Yes, but that's not my job. Um, People have different parenting skills. People have different schedules, different structures. Kids need sleep. Like, I could go off on a whole tangent about that in itself. My girls go to bed at 8.30, 9 o'clock. I'm in bed by 8.30. They're teenagers. They need their sleep. They love to sleep. It's just a very structured environment. Um, It's just how it works for us. But everybody's household works differently. And when I was a teen, I don't know how old her kid. I don't. Please don't tell me in the comments. I don't need to know. But if that's the last thing we're concerned about is her kids being up too late on spring break. I mean, again, I have no indication to say she's not a good parent. Yeah, some of you guys know her differently on a different level. I'm just saying. Yeah, Kimberly, that happens a lot. Yeah, that, Mark, that's going to open up a whole ball of worms too. Yeah, Dark Horse, you can see that you were upset and you were coming from a place of concern. And I, I really... Honestly, like that took a lot of balls to just send me that. And that's why I won't cut you down for like, I can tell you were emotional and you were just fed up after that. Yeah, Terry, it's, it's drilled into people's brains that if you see something, say something, but honestly, that's not always helpful because a lot of times what we see isn't reality of what's actually going on, especially on the internet. You see, like, I see it happen to influencers, like big influencers all the time. Now, Family vloggers, a completely different story. People exploit their children for money, like Ren Eleanor, for instance. Um, that's, that's just disgusting, in my opinion. However, what we're seeing of their actual reality is like a very curated view of what they want you to see. I don't show my girls on here. The only one you guys will ever see is Kenzie. I do show like, I showed in a short Kiki waking the girls up. You can't see her, her face. everybody, Kenzie, Kyle, and I all checked it to make sure it was acceptable. Even if you zoomed in, you can't tell. She just looks like a blob of hair under a blanket because I protect their privacy because at the end of the day, the internet is a very interesting place. I've had threats to put my kids on the dark web. I've had CPS calls. I've had all sorts of threats to Mackenzie. Kenzie's been threatened to be pew-pewed. Um, just because people can't handle open discourse as adults online. And it's, it's not cool. It's ridiculous. It's such a waste of time. Yes, Aaron, but please, yes, absolutely. Kathy, 100%. What gets to me is how they all trash people on their behavior or how they think they should act. I've had my own trauma until you've been there. You should not judge someone on how they react, especially parents that are going through the worst time of their life. Like, that's my problem. I I could care less what she says about me. But you are harming actual people that are going through horrific circumstances as is. None of us, I don't think, would want to be in their shoes. Not a single one of us would want to ever feel the emotions that they're feeling and be judged on things that 
might not even be as they seem. Absolutely, Lacey, that's very valid. Oh my gosh, Faith, see, that's so fucking ridiculous. For being in Mallory's chat, are you fucking kidding me? So this is a typical thing of her to like stomp her feet and say, if you're seen in the chat, you will be blocked. That's, that's so ridiculous. Yeah, at least he, a lot of my girls were here. Like most of you were here when it was, it was brutal. And I showed it all. It's on my community tab. There's lives about it. Like I posted all of it, but I also handled it behind the scenes. I, I don't take threats to my children lightly. Um, I filed police reports and kept it moving. You know, it's not content. My kids are not content for the internet and getting in a back and forth with people that are threatening them. Like, first of all, it's anonymous emails. Uh, we know the group it came from, like it is what it is, but it's such a waste of time for people who shouldn't, like they can't handle this arena anyways, because they just lie to lie. Like there's so many people out here that just lie to lie. They've gotten it in their head that they can create this other reality that's different from the actual life they live. The internet provides a space where people can be anything they want. And it's like a disconnect from the real life. We've seen it so many times that people create these complete falsehoods of who they are, jobs, claiming that they lost a child when that didn't even happen. Like that sick shit like that, like sick shit. The, and then they weaponize it against other people and try to emotionally manipulate people because of that. But it's allowed people to create these falsehoods. It's because they're, they're ashamed of their actual reality. So they portray something completely different to the internet. And it's, it's really sad. It's truthfully sad because true happiness isn't about impressing a bunch of strangers online. You're never, that's never going to be fulfilling. I don't know, not for me at least, like it's never going to be fulfilling. And to be accepted on a bunch of things that you aren't even, isn't it better to be your genuine authentic self and be accepted for who you are? And even the people that don't accept you, that's a them problem, not a you problem. I don't know, it's so weird. The whole thing out here is weird. Yeah, dark horse, I get that. Wow. See, I don't even know the names you guys are talking about. I, I couldn't tell you shit about these people. Yeah, they do, Melissa. They completely lie to themselves. I'm sorry that all of you guys have gone through so much because of that person. Like, I'm really sorry. Hey, Spudler. I'm actually shocked, though, at how how many people she's done this to. Like, truthfully, I am really... Miss Italy, I feel the same way. That's something I always say. Be authentic to yourself. Like, people's opinions of you don't matter. Like, oh. we spend so much time in our lives trying to please other people to do for other people. None of us have time in our older years to worry about some, be a, I mean, maybe I'm speaking on my ass again, but I don't got time to worry about that shit. My real life is crazier than anything <laughs> on here. I get up way before I should in the morning and go to bed really early. I'm old, but I just don't spend my energy fighting with randoms. Like I, I've had to, trust me, you come out and slander me, you're gonna get your ass handed to you, especially when you weaponize DV that wasn't DV. And you try to cut me down, I'll come swinging. Oh my gosh, revival. Oh, I can't handle that either. I, mm -mm, the cancer battles. 
Um, fuck. What happened to when we just wish somebody well and keep it moving? Like, I, mm -mm. absolutely, Smother. Self deprecating humor is something I really do love. Chrissy, it's so hard sometimes if kids are off a bedtime routine. So hard. Absolutely, Mark, it is. Yeah, Lacey, I didn't know this. I didn't know any of this. Didn't know any of this. Oh, Dark Horse, I ap appreciate that so much. And I have so much respect for you for owning and being transparent and admitting you were emotional and saying, like, nothing but respect for that. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. And I know, like, I know you were, I knew you weren't going to do that. I just had, I wasn't even talking to you because you, there's so many people that lurk in the background that do this shit just to keep the infighting going. Like, I wouldn't doubt that somebody in the bushes that doesn't like her will call it and then she will tell everybody that you're the one. I don't want you to have to go through that. And I also don't want her given the opportunity to play the victim because she's not. She's not. Oh, it's very obvious. See, I don't know en enough about her fundraisers either. I'm 41, Miss Italy. I'm 41. I'd turn my camera on, but I look like shit. Has anyone watched Chris ex Nina talk about how Chris treated her and the kids? Lucy, yes. So let, let me explain my theory on that. Wrong time, wrong place. Every victim has the right to their story. They should be allowed to tell their story however they want. I think the timing of it was suspect to me. Um, there's a lot of details that were given that are very contradicting to actual reality, such as like if he threw the car in reverse in the police station parking lot, we know that police stations have cameras and therefore she would have been open for a civil suit, which maybe she is going after the police department for not protecting her. There's a lot of inconsistencies. The timing of it was just very suspect to me. And it was complete character assassination. Wrong time, wrong place. They've been in a nasty custody battle for years, not discrediting anything other than that. Like they have been obviously going through some contention. Um, but how does it help Sebastian? What did Nina provide that would be any indication of where Sebastian is or what happened to Sebastian? That's my question to you. <laughs> she pays in formaldehyde. <laughs> I told Kyle that you said that the other day and he was like, ew, that's gross. I've never had any work done either before that gets started. I've never had a single fucking nothing done. I'm getting Botox for the first time for migraines. I've never had anything done, obviously. You can tell. I look like fucking a skank Tanya Harding. God damn it. <laughs> Shit, I lost a goddamn tooth when my sinus infection pushed it out. I came on here and I was like, look it, I'm toothless now. That's stupid tooth because the infection is still there, still out of my mouth. Titanium, she read sections of it that benefited her. Chris never liked Sebastian. Lucy, Lucy do you, or is it, I don't know. Is it Lucy, Lucy, whatever the case may be. Um, and your perception of that is from social media and what you saw on social media and what he has said, correct? Or do you know them in reality? Do you know them in real life? Because I just asked you a question. How did Nina's interview give you insight to where Sebastian is? And instead of answering that question, you came back with, Chris never liked Sebastian. Where's the, where's your evidence to provide that? Absolutely, Spudler. Most places are um, having to do whole departments for internet stuff. And honestly, that's one thing that I did learn throughout this whole process with talking to law enforcement about all the threats that I had received and stuff. Internet crimes are starting to become some of the most dangerous with people in the false swatting and things of that nature, because it's hard to trace uh, the sources of some of these down and they can put a lot of people in danger 
at one time and it's it's very very dangerous and it's a growing problem that they can't get ahead of Yeah, I didn't see it being helpful at all. But she won't say their names, Pepper. She won't say their names. She's like, they've been doing this. I, um, no, no. Comes right from Seth. So Seth is the virtue and the beacon of honesty and truth. Is that what you're trying to tell me? That we take Seth at his word and we pick apart Chris's words? But have you read the divorce papers of what Seth was involved in with his divorce with Katie. So if we're going to give that courtesy to uh, Nina, shouldn't we give it to Katie in the court documents that have been given out? I mean, truthfully. <laughs> Wendy, I don't know if it will or not. I know they use it in your, Kenzie was giving me a breakdown the other day. They do your shoulders, your neck, a little bit on your forehead, but most of it's not anything to do with cosmetic. Melissa, did she do that to you too? A fake swat? I'm assuming that could have happened. Oh God. Yeah, see that's problematic as hell. Uh, does her husband join her shows? Is that why you guys know his name and know about him? Is Does she share that information publicly? I haven't caught her talking about him, so maybe I just missed those parts. Her lives are like six hours. I'm lucky to sit through two, and I always pick the best times to get on there usually. No, but do tell about what, Lucy. Um, if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to go look for it. Because, again, I'm giving Seth and Chris both the benefit of doubt right now. Like... Law enforcement has not said anything, but if you want to actually look at it through an unbiased lens, please go look and find there's people that have covered it. And it's not, it's not, it's not great. It's not great for any of them, but any of us could be in those shoes. Yeah. Y'all Nana's not drunk. I can't get over that. Wow, I'm sorry that that happened, Melissa. Absolutely trapped. I agree with you. It's such an emotional state for all of them that I don't even know half the time if they even realize what they're saying. Truthfully, like they're being fired questions at. And yeah, I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. I just wouldn't. I encourage you to go look. If you actually are really wanting to like navigate through and learn all of it it's out there y'all like people have gone over it and talked about it now again i don't think it I, it doesn't mean anything to me besides these have been nasty divorces and custody battles that have been going on for years obviously there's things you know people are exes for a reason right They're, they can say all sorts of stuff but if you're going to give that much gravity to what nina said about chris i think you owe it to the other side to go learn the other side of the coin too like we we owe that to all of them and truthfully what we owe them is that they are innocent until proven guilty of something and truthfully all of all this stuff talking about the parents and their misbehaviors and their past history isn't bringing sebastian home it really isn't <clears throat> yeah that's true terry he did say that he didn't remember being on that live Yeah, absolutely, hoodie and a crowbar, and I don't wish it on anybody. Anne said people really have no understanding of what it is to be under a microscope while also working through a traumatic event. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we have to support the facts, and the facts are that all of the parents are innocent until otherwise proven. Oh, yeah, see, I, I've 
never heard him. I don't pay attention to that though. How long ago was the divorce? So, um, Luck Dragon, it had to have been when they were in California. So if I'm guessing probably seven, eight, nine years ago, somewhere in that arena. I would assume that was the stories that have been told and the questions that he's answered and stuff that would lead me to be, I can't tell you the exact date off the top of my head. I'd have to go look at the documents again and I'm on my phone. Holly asks, if you Google or just search it on YouTube, you'll be able to find it. I've seen other people cover it. I have the documents. I haven't shared them because again, for me, it that's not what it's about. Like, I'm not going to smear Seth because I'm giving all of them the grace. But if you really are doing your due diligence and trying to look at it through a very, if you want to look at Chris and condemn him, I think the same, I think all factors should be looked at, right? If that's what you, what Lucy was saying or Lucci was saying, I think it needs to be across the board. And I think a lot of people are missing that. You can find him anywhere, Holly. It's not that hard to look. Oh, Pepper. See, I've heard that, that there was homophobic stuff said. I have never seen it. Absolutely, Carrie. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, like, their divorce being dirty, what does that do? What? Their divorce being nasty and mudslinging, what does that teach us about the current situation? Nothing. Nothing. Truthfully. Yes. Yep. Here's my thing. Nobody knows what happened to Sebastian, but God, are you assuming that he's deceased? Is that what you're assuming by that? Because if you're claiming that nobody knows what happened to him, but God, but then at the same time, cornholing Seth into, or not Seth, Chris into him and Katie being problematic. I, I, I'm not understanding your point of thought here or your rational. Absolutely, hoodie and a crowbar. That's why I have no, no desire to share any of that. Holly, then you can find it there. It's out there. It's out there. I won't cover it because it's not to me anything to bring Sebastian home. People have passed. Like, there's no... I don't know. There's no grace given to these guys. Absolutely, dark horse. People always sling mud in all of these situations. In custody battles, oh my gosh. In divorces, all of it on all sides. Like we got law enforcement here's here's the other thing you guys law enforcement is privy to all of this information if you think for one second that they don't know about all this stuff they're not they didn't see you know again people think they're like law enforcement is just sitting there twiddling their thumbs that's not what's going on here they've dumped so many resources into this case so many Right now, and I'm going to say it again, there is no indication or evidence to prove that any of them harmed Sebastian. If this was about Sebastian, people would stop and realize that cutting down the parents on any side isn't necessary. But then again, people continue to take their pitchforks at Chris and Katie and Seth is being touted around as this hero of some sorts and can't all things be possible? Can't they all be humans and make mistakes and have made misjudgments in parenting and everything that the rest of us have always done and they're being criticized under a microscope so every little situation that they've ever been through is being blown into these huge, huge things. They all should be given grace. None of us would want to be in that. That's what I'm really hoping for, Holly. In my opinion, that's 
my hope. That is my hope and that he comes home. That is my hope and I will still stay there because it happens so often. Being a teenager is hard enough, y'all. I just know that if I was ever in these shoes, I would not want to be, I, and it, oh, it would be a nasty mess. Many people assume that Sebastian is traumatized, upset, or afraid. There is no proof of any of that. Honestly, truthful, Terry Dean, and the people that surround him, like his teachers, the people at school, like they, you guarantee that law enforcement went in there and talked to those people, you know, outside of just what family has said and things of that nature. They've ran with so many narratives about the family themselves there are other people that you know if they had indication of that people will know it's not our job to even judge that like what kids most kids are traumatized truthfully it's called generational cycles that if we don't start breaking some of these generational cycles uh, i mean Oh, I like that you guys are having combos in the chat about stuff. I, I'm And I'm being genuine. Like, I don't have a clue what you guys are talking about, but it looks like there's some conversations going on that people are actually being able to air out. Oh, Miss Italy, I'd be right there with you. I tell you what, they can make all sorts of stuff into a salacious thing because here's a lot of you are new here and I'm an open book, so you can ask me anything you want. Um, I raise my two biologic nieces because of addiction. My sister is in prison. She will be going to, I hope, a long-term treatment facility. That's my hope for her. She's dealt with this for 20 plus years of her life. It's been a whole roller coaster ride. I have so much love for her. And it's not that she never loved her children. She absolutely loved her children. Addiction is a disease and it's nasty and it can completely take over. And she wanted to be numb from trauma that we experienced as children. And mental illness was never talked about. Mental health was never talked about when we were kids. Our parents were divorced. We went through a horrible situation. So I don't fault her. In fact, I have a lot of guilt because she ended up with that part of the life and here I am, like I, I have a lot of survivor's guilt for it. But the reality is, is none of us have perfect lives. I love my littles so much. I fought hard for them for nine years because they have uphill battles and they were dealt a shitty hand, not intentionally, but the way life worked. There is part of me that has resentment still, of course, if I'm being honest, but this is so common. These these situations are so common. I have knocked down every fucking door to find resources for my girls to get them the best forms of help I possibly could. It is exhausting. It becomes a full-time job. It becomes your identity. And I would never, ever do anything differently. My oldest daughter has chronic illness. Um, they think she probably has lupus. Uh we have been through it all and my life isn't perfect. Kyle is not the biologic father of any of my kids and he is their dad. That man is incredible, but he's been divorced. I've been divorced. We all have stuff. Like everybody has stuff. Everybody has baggage. And when somebody wants to go through your baggage and find something, they're going to, and they can twist any narrative about it. Any single one of us could be in those shoes and vilified. And at five seconds, they could take something that's completely misconstrued and turn it into something like this. I said to Kyle, I said, oh God, if our one of our girls ever goes missing, uh, nope, never gonna tell the internet because hell no. It's just so unfair. Nobody's a perfect parent. Yeah, especially a missing child, Pepper. You are so right. Oh, no. I agree. I really hope for that, too. Heatherlicious, I, 
I wish that was the case too, but some people don't have, this is their job. Hey, love in the laundry. I think people need to talk more openly about this is the reality though. And when we all sit and point fingers and act like we've had these perfect lives, what the fuck? Wait, I have made many mistakes as a parent. Many. Holy shit. Many. And I've had to apologize to my kids for trauma I've caused them. Fuck, my health caused Kenzie PTSD. My health alone did unintentionally. Like I didn't have any control over that, but it did. And I felt I still carry so much guilt about what she went through because of that. On top of other things, none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. Addiction is terrible. Yeah. Addiction can rip your heart. Yeah, Miss Arnold. Yes. Yeah, all my girls are amazing too. Don't let me for any one second take away from they've they've taught me they were a blessing in disguise to me they I didn't know how much I needed them as we needed each other yeah um miss you 313 there's been a lot of questions around that about you know why did he have to earn that why you know if he was going to do that a year ago like there's a lot of questions around that i still want to think for the best that there was just some things that you know seth is a single man um that works that maybe sebastian's schedule you know i'm still trying to hope for the best and not read into it too deep because it could be many different situations oh my god my family is a fucking disaster y'all Trauma, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I think people don't talk enough about, like, here's another thing. Um, we talk very openly about suicide ideation over here, and I call it what it is because I'm not going to sugarcoat it because I think people need to understand the reality of it. Kenzie has openly discussed this, so this is why I'm okay to say this, but she has dealt, my 21-year-old has dealt with suicidal ideation since she was 15, 16 years old because she has chronic illness, and one of them is called trigeminal neuralgia that causes significant horrifying pain and for a long time there it was just my goal every day to make sure she made it to the next that became my identity i found myself so scared to even fall asleep like i still i i i sleep but it's super light these are the realities of what so many people are struggling with so many people in this chat have lost people to suicide Mental illness is not addressed. It's not talked about. We come, a lot of us come from generations where it was not to be discussed. There's things that you don't discuss, mental illness, religion, politics. Those are the barriers we have to break if we want things to change because those are the things that we've been all ingrained into that are uncomfortable for people. We need people to be uncomfortable so these hard discussions can be had so more people can be helped. So more people can understand that they matter and they have worth. Addiction is a disease and it's a nasty disease and anybody, I don't care if you're a doctor or a lawyer or anything, it doesn't mean you're a piece of shit human. And we have so many people who are addiction or who are addicts that go missing and are not shown any type of respect, compassion, care, concern, anything because they're labeled as an addict. Addicts matter too. Some of the addicts I know are some of the smartest people. They just are dealing with a horrible demon that I wouldn't wish on anybody. And there's a little shit in my chat right there. My sister is a beautiful human being, a beautiful human being. She's got major demons, major demons. First time I took her to rehab was when I was 19 years old. Me, me on my own, took her to rehab. My family didn't do it, I did it. I fought like hell to get her into a state facility. Didn't do anything at the end of the day. It was like a Band-Aid for a bigger problem. Nobody in my family wanted to talk about it. Nobody, you know, brushed it under the rug. My dad's very, very extremely religious. My mom didn't know where to even start because her dad was a Navy sailor. Her mom had obviously always struggled, but they never talked about it. She attempted to take her life when I was 19 and pregnant. I had my daughter at 19. 
thankfully she, my mom, she survived. Um, these are the realities of what goes on though. This is the reality of so many lives. My life is no different or more problematic or more struggles than any of the rest of you. We all have baggage. Every one of us. And these barriers have to be broken. These things need to be discussed, not weaponized for sympathy and aspats. When people like Brittany weaponize situations to cry victim, meanwhile, completely disregarding their behavior towards others and adding to the stress of what their reality really is and how it so it's became a fucking career for people to cut others down who don't have a public life or a perfect life. Think about that. Think about that. It has became a fucking career for some of these people to exploit the pain and suffering of our families going through typical situations that none of us want to be in. A lot of people grow up to be therapists because they want to help. A lot of people grow up to be doctors because they want to help. A lot of people grow up to be nurses because they want to help because they see a problem. Then we have this group of people who is out here who wants to be known for exploiting children and families in their most vulnerable times because they're going through shit that all of us can relate to in some capacity. You know what, Love in the Laundry, I love that so much. We have always left open the door for reunification because at the end of the day, I love my sister and I want them to understand and know their mom and that they have that right. Whatever they decide, they set the boundaries for themselves and I will always respect that. We've always left that open because that's their mom. I don't talk down about her in front of them. They're never, I don't talk down about her on here. Like her struggles are so common. And until we start having these conversations that open up the dialogue to start people accepting themselves and knowing that they matter, I, I don't know. There's so many kids in foster care. There's so many kids. There's just, it's a shitty situation. Oh, Cosmic, it's good to see you. So good to see you. That's why it, when it comes to online shit, if you want to unpack my baggage, just be prepared. It's going to take us all a long time because I'm not even ready to unpack some of it. Oh my God. They got prayed for. Call my dad. You'll just get prayed for. <laughs> That's not a joke. That's not a joke. <laughs> They'll probably cast the demons out for you too. Okay, Kenzie, thank you for the warning. That's why I, y'all, people are exploiting other people's losses. These people are exploiting suicides and blaming people around those people suffering who have taken their lives for causing, like, what? How are we doing this? It just, it breaks my heart. Oh, Dark Horse, we all make mistakes. That's part of, that's the beauty of this because nobody's perfect. We all fucking make mistakes. To err is to human. Oh, Spudler, it's good to see you. Oh, Perry, I'm sending you so much love to all of you who have lost somebody from addiction, suicide, anything. I'm sending you all the love and the hugs. I've missed seeing you too, Cosmic. These conversations have to happen. And then, you know, people, this is why I'm so passionate about this shit and take, I have the attitude I do. Because at the end of the day, 
until people understand that it's not a fucking career choice. It's not a career fair choice to be a YouTuber who exploits people's tragedies. Like that's not an option. There should be no choice for that selection. And I'm not talking to the true crime creators who do cold cases, missing persons, do it with integrity and morals and keep it factual and keep it about awareness and getting the faces out there. I'm not talking to you. So if that shoe doesn't fit, don't lace it up. The ones that are going over jury trials, the ones that are really trying to help families heal and find some sort of closure. There's no shade in this towards you. There's a whole different level out here. These people who are exploiting other people's pain and suffering, meanwhile, judging them and thinking that they sit on some sort of pedestal above everybody, that's the people I'm talking to. Oh my gosh, just another troll. <sighs> that is so hard and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for what I'm sure it's such a roller coaster of emotions. Um, I'm not sure because I've never been in that spot. So let me not say that. I'm really sorry that. You are experiencing all that pain and emotions. Please understand that you are. You need to feel those emotions. However, you need to process them. They're valid. Don't let anybody invalidate your feelings of how you feel, whether it's anger, whether it's sadness, whether it's grief, whether it's love, all of that. Your feelings are valid and they matter. And I'm really sorry for your loss. Extremely sorry for your loss. Titanium's over here. I'm done with talk to text. Yeah, Perry. Yeah, yeah. It really is. Kyle, um, Kyle shared this on here too, just for those of you that don't know. The guy that pops into my lives behind me, that's Kyle, aka Cantonio. He comes on with me. He's not hidden either. He He's a freaking goofball and a half, but he has suffered extreme loss. He lost both of his brothers, one of his brothers to a heroin overdose and one to brain cancer. He's had extreme loss, so he is the only child. We actually moved to Arizona to be closer to his parents. And it's been the most incredible thing to watch their relationship build on all ends. I adore my in-laws like no other. They are, the, they are a blessing to me and my girls beyond measure. I couldn't even tell you how much I adore them. But watching them kind of heal and, you know, they talk about, we talk about on the boys' birthday and one of the boys their daughter is actually getting married this summer and you know watching kids grow after a significant loss like that like it's such a it's an amazing thing but these things affect entire families um it just is the reality <coughs> and that grief is real and it it's not linear and it's not there's no time frame on it and if it's a birthday, the date that they passed, it affects him. And some, you know, it's been 10, 10 plus years. That is, grief is something else. It is a whole beast. And anybody going through it, I feel for you. I'm very sorry and sending you so much love and healing energy. And Am's words are wearing off on me. But allowing yourself to feel all the emotions, we, we tell ourselves so often that we are wrong for feeling these things or we let other people dictate our emotions or try to put on a happy face for everybody else because a lot of us are in the thing of fake it till you make it, right? We have to please other people around us and we try and put our emotions to the wayside for other people's comfortable needs and it doesn't work. You have to feel it all, unfortunately. Never lose hope. Hey, Lisa. And for all of you the, in the comment section, because I know there's a few, in recovery, congrats on your recovery. And if you're in active addiction, just remember, it's just, you still matter. You still have purpose. 
and that is not your identity. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. That's all I can say. Okay, now this turned into a whole Becky rambling about There's shit that matters. Steps to the stupid desk. You guys want to see something funny? Kenzie's got a bunch of screws in an instruction manual. I built my PC holder. She don't need no man. Kyle's a great human being. But I think it's a good reminder that everybody is broken in some way, shape, or form. Some people just make it look better than others. Truthfully, so many people, a lot of people have dealt with lose, loss of a child. Oh, shoes I never, ever want to be in. Shoes I never, ever want to be able to say I know how that feels or I know. No, I, no, 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 and I don't want it for anybody. I wish nobody would have to go through that. Nobody. Unfortunately, we can't fix these things, so it's time we talk about them in a reality that people understand and show compassion and care for our fellow humans. Humanity is lost in so many ways. The hard conversations people skirt away from because it's too hard for them. They don't want to discuss these things when it's reality that everybody deals with the shit. Oh, I, Cosmic, I'm not trying to make you cry. <laughs> she is her and her Ikea stuff. All right, y'all. I didn't mean to turn into like getting on my pedestal because I'm definitely not. I am definitely not perfect in any way, shape, or form. I'm a perfect asshole. Just ask me. People need to stop giving a shit about some of this stuff, y'all. These conversations need to be had, and we need to start showing empathy and compassion for people at their most vulnerable times. There's laws against exploiting vulnerable people. Victims are vulnerable. Victims' families are vulnerable. Yeah, y'all, Nana's not drunk, 100%. Kathy, I love that. I'm perfectly imperfect and beautifully broken. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's okay to not be okay. It's fucking okay to not be okay. Oh, Cosmic, sending you so much love. Yeah, these are the, this is what, this is what drives me. If you want to get to the core of why this, I am, I can have no problem saying what I say. It's because I see the reality of so many people and I wouldn't want, I would never want to be in these shoes. Never, not a single fucking day. And I find it to be absolutely disgusting. If this resonates with you, that you are exploiting a family at their worst moments and you think to yourself, am I doing that? Please just sit back and really think about it. Would you want to wear those shoes that they had to lace up without a choice? They're not given this as of right now, especially in this circumstance. They have no control over this, of where this is going. Oh, Dark Horse, I appreciate that. You know, that's the thing. If I can, if I can, if there's one thing I can ever say, it's that I, I, I just, there's enough pain and struggle in the world, in our lives. Like we have, everybody has so much baggage. We need to stop comparing people's luggage or in trying to unpack their luggage and instead offering to help them put the luggage away, to help them heal. Healing is something that so many people don't ever get to experience because they have too many people digging through their luggage to try and weaponize it against them. Healing is not pretty at all, but so many people can't even get to that stage because too many people are too busy judging them and trying to pick through their luggage and compare it. It's, no. All right. According to Lynn, is it Lynn? Lynn? I, 
Y'all, I can't talk. I'm going to start giving nicknames again. <laughs> T, T still got hers. D still got hers. Yeah, y'all, Nana's not drunk. I have too. All right, y'all. I'm going to get off here. Lene. Okay, good. Lene, thank you for saying it like that because now I can actually do it. <laughs> and I'll probably say it that same thing next time. All right, I'm going to leave you with this. I. <laughs> Okay, wait. Uh, LJ U B I C 268. Why not call out all of the other 100 bigger YouTubers having call in super chats, et cetera, on Sebastian for hours and hours? Get them too. Sorry, English is my second language. You're totally fine. If you go actually look at my page, you will see that I am not. Um, I was, so Marvon's story is the majority of the videos on my page from a year and a half ago, because that was a case that we were following very in-depthly, something I don't intend on doing again. That's why I'm really trying to be choosy about where I insert my time. But if you look at my page, you will see that I do actually call out other channels or I, I wouldn't even call it, I criticize their behavior on a public content. Like that's what it is. I hate saying call out because that's. I, it just feels childish because um, <clears throat> I'm not no preacher, but I actually have T Rev 757. He's on the upcoming list. J is for justice. Pascal. There's a bunch of them. It's just a time thing for me. Brittany keeps having people on her panel that are really problematic, like crime sleuth and CJ. That's why she's gotten a little attention from me. Um, but in the big scheme of things, she is just one of a huge problem, one of a huge. That's why it's really interesting to me that she is so thin skinned about it because she's just one of hundreds. Spanky, Justin of Justice for All, Slimy's World, Prayer Garden of America, um, AB. Uh, I, I could go on and on, but there is a lot and I will be doing more content on a lot of them. Havana. Oh, Shay, thank you for being here. Does that make sense? Have the combo we never had. Heather, I love that. Yeah, have the combo that, yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Hey, Pete. Coco, I love you coming in and saying that. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, y'all, Nana's not drunk. And I think people, they'll see that too. Um, I oftentimes mix problematic creators that panel together too. It's kind of a twofer at once, like Brittany and CJ, Brittany and Crime Sleuth, and like they combined, it's even worse, but T-Rev's coming up, so. All right, y'all, I am, I know Kelly Diamond's unlimited coverage. It's unlimited content. And I really need to read my uh, Tim Ballard autobiography with my dramatic reading style because that lawsuit and that punk ass asshole and his re-victimization of victims. Ugh, pisses me off. Yeah, Nicole, AB has me fuming. What a fucking snake ass. Ugh. Lucy, I'm going to continue to judge people, just so you know. Um, I'm absolutely going to continue to judge people on their behavior that they continue to do online publicly. I don't care about their personal life, um, but I do care about the harm and the misinformation that they are continuing to put out. If you want to say it's judging people, that's fine. Um, but I'm going to continue to do that. I'm going to continue to judge these assholes that aren't giving the, any grace to these families that deserve it in their most vulnerable time. You can call it judging. I just call it being factual about the misinformation and harm they're doing to these victims in their cases. Oh, Betty. Yeah, Betty is fucking. Betty is always a train wreck. Absolutely. But um, I'll stand on my pedestal judging people. Just so you know, like, I have no problem with that. If you want to say that I'm exploiting these people, absolutely. I'm absolutely comfortable with exploiting the opportunists. 
100%. You can give me that title all the day long and you can call me a judging asshole. I'll lace that bitch up and wear it because there is no arena where this is acceptable or should be acceptable. Again, I'm going to say it clearly for you in the back. There should never be a career choice of exploiting a fucking family's worst tragedies for monetary gain for clicks and views on the fucking internet. Never. And I'm good with that. All right. Have a wonderful day, all of you guys. I will probably see you guys shortly. Um, I do have an appointment this afternoon, but I'm going to try and do a T-Rev uh, segment here shortly. I just wanted to discuss this, though, because, Brittany, this isn't what we're going to do, um, at least for me. You want to fight personal with people, anything like that, but when you try to mix the Islander, that was Sarah, on your panel, into anything about CPS with children, you need to sit all the fucking way down. And I will even pull the chair out for you. Sit all the fucking way down because that's one thing I will not do and I will not participate in immature, emotional bullshit that you do to other people. You won't get that response out of me. I will continue to keep it in the arena of your misinformation and all you're doing is making me more encouraged to continue on your ass because you're folding already uh, and trying to tap out and go get ROs and please don't waste your time. Change your behavior, do some self-reflection. That's a better option. Bye y'all.